You know, I'd love to say we just got four days left, but we all know they're going to try to contest it. They're going to try to steal it. I've got all the news here. The polls show Trump in rigged polls is six points ahead, four points ahead, eight points ahead, ten points ahead. Depending on the battleground state, six points ahead in Florida. They are crapping their little britches right now. And they are getting ready to pull out all the stops fraud-wise. I've been up late every night working. And so it's like the calm before the real storm hits. I am just super calm today. I'm normally just chomping at the bit, bouncing off the walls. I am I am super calm. Now, I only had a half cup of coffee this morning. It's because I take selenium. It gives me so much energy because it's key to electrochemical processes in the brain. I realize I haven't taken selenium in a couple of days. So I'm going to take, this is not a plug. I realized I was just doing it and forgot to take it during the one minute break so now I'm plugging because it's out of necessity I'm going to take my uh, probiotic I'm going to take my selenium from InfoWarsLife.com and I'm going to take a brain force too because I don't normally need yeah, I wasn't planning this I don't normally need uh, brain force I mean, I mean like I said taking selenium I've even cut back on caffeine 90% probably. Uh, but then sometimes going off caffeine, I just suddenly get like a doldrum. I mean, I got tons of energy, but compared to normal. And so right now I'm taking a brain force and I'm taking a, I'm taking a probiotic, biome defense from InfoWarsLife.com. And then again, I don't know where it's gone. Here it is. My selenium, bio true selenium from InfoWarsLife.com. I'm going to take this right now as well. I was just thinking, why not just plug on air since I was already about to take it during the break? Mm. Watch what happens the next hour. Mighty Mouse. It's like the, I'm strong to the finish because I eat my spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Doot, doot. You know, part of that is just being myself and uh, being self-deprecating. Because pride go up before a fall, and it's fun to act stupid sometimes, isn't it? Gallows humor, my friends, but I'm not going to mix being silly now with this important information, so I'll cover it when we come back from break and as I reset my mind. Uh, but, man, when you're reading about pedophile rings and, and Epstein and the Clintons and just at a certain point, I just want to, it's like, wow, could we just get some half-decent people in government that aren't total scum? and who aren't trying to start World War III and who aren't in love with radical Islamists opening our border up. I mean, really, it goes to the psychology of these people that they're so outrageously unhappy. And Hillary, a lot of psychiatrists have pointed this out. I'll have Pachinik on you know, just about how she only wants to be around really ugly people. Now, I'm not a you know, crazy fake person where I just want to be around beautiful people, but with Hillary, it's known. Really ugly, really nasty, really weird people, really criminal people. She likes hanging around with pedophiles. She likes representing scum. She likes just, 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 she likes not taking baths. Uh, she's just a big, stinking, horrible, nasty monster. And she is probably one of the greatest villains I've ever known of. And, but again, she hides it all because she's this waddling, evil old woman. You know, it's supposedly okay because she's a woman. We have names for evil women. We call them witches. Oh, oh, Alex Jones calls her a witch. I don't mean that literally. I mean it figuratively as an archetype. But I love how the media test markets all these attacks on us and then drops them immediately because all it does is boost Donald Trump's polls. We're not in the same old world anymore where you control things and you say what's normal and you get to criticize us. When you criticize us, our stock goes up. You are done. I know you still have the big paychecks and still think you're somebody in the MSM. You're not. You're a disgraced joke. And Donald Trump smelled that. He's always been a nationalist and a patriot and against NAFTA and GATT, but he's become dominantly that now and has gone through trial by fire and has come out after the battle with the metaphysical Borog even stronger. He's no longer Donald Trump the gray, but Trump the white. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen.
This Thanksgiving, I want to thank you for everything you've done, and I want to encourage you to visit InfoWarsStore.com every day, where we have some of the biggest sales in our history going. Our thanks to you and everything you've done. And again, when you purchase these products, I want to thank you again for shopping with the good guys, buying your war bonds, and funding the very cutting edge, tip of the spear, fearless organization. It is the win-win where you support the broadcast, you get high-quality products, we support you, we promote liberty, and we grow the liberty movement, we grow the liberty economy with voting with our dollars, and every day the globalists lose ground, every day the globalists become more desperate, every day the globalists lose hope. This is a special, in the past we only did once a year. Now, I've been bringing it back every few months because it's so popular, and obviously the times are so crazy. Our entire line of super high-quality storable foods at InfoWarsStore.com is 30 to 40% off, but only today, Thanksgiving. We're only four days out, and Donald Trump is Americana. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. That there is a seismic shift, just like Brexit. The awakening to the true nature of planetary control. And once you force that debate out in the open, and people realize that they've been kept in the dark and are being governed from afar, just as with our colonies in 1775 and 1776, the breakaway is as sure as night following day and so on and so forth. Here's part of an intro with Donald Trump. Americanism, not globalism will be our credo. Americanism, not globalism. Americanism, not globalism. The era of economic surrender will finally be over. We will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. They have gotten the political establishment and the media establishment to become pure, wanton henchmen of totalitarianism. If you were a foreign power looking to weaken America, you couldn't do better than Hillary Clinton's economic agenda. I think what the Chinese have done is really smart. The skyscrapers went up in Beijing and many other cities around the world, while the factories and neighborhoods crumbled right here in Detroit. It's all training us to accept less, lowering expectations, a post-industrial world, a new dark age. That's what the UN Biological Diversity Assessment 1996 calls for. When we abandoned the policy of America first, we started rebuilding other countries instead of our own. Not a world, Winston, that gets more beautiful and more technological and stronger. A world that gets uglier and stupider and more stunted. That they, the, the, the uh, government should allow Hillary Clinton to become president of the United States. I voted for uh, Hillary Clinton. Well, I voted for Hillary. I guess I have to since I'm working for her as well. You want an image of the future, Winston? It's a boot stomping on a human face forever. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. Women are treated discriminated against in all of these countries she took money against. Gays and lesbians are either executed or punished severely. They're mistreated. Uh, she claims to be their champion. Don't look at me, Winston, and see the black circles around my eyes and see how ugly and weak I am expressing myself and dying that I torture people 18 hours a day and I have a horrible life. That's the beauty of the satanic evil of the priest of power ripping apart humanity. We're here to hurt humans. We're here to suck your guts out. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. Well, I told the Clintons two weeks ago that, uh, from my sources, that if they didn't start backing down and didn't uh, stop trying to steal the election, that more info would be coming out dealing with sex, dealing with children. And you notice now that's coming out in the New York News. We've had guests on yesterday the NYPD's got the information. This will destroy the Democratic Party. This will irrevocably annihilate you. But you tried to kill the country, didn't you? You tried for a full takeover. You were so naked. You were so arrogant that you openly had all these servers selling our secrets to the world. These were drop boxes to then corrupt other politicians and get them involved using secret servers and pseudonyms and gnome de plumes to complete your corruption. Now, until 45 after... We've got some breaking news coming then. Uh, we have William F. Jasper joining us to cover the election, what he thinks is coming, what's happening. He's the editor at thenewamerican.com. And, and I don't always introduce him. 
this way because I, I like to do this for the average guest. It's important to know where we came from and what we've done. I've never been a member of the John Bird Society. It was set up in 1956, and it was set up by American patriots who discovered that we would turned our back in China and put the communist Chinese in power in 1949. That's now been declassified, what, 13, 14 years ago. But the John Birch Society, with military people and others, began to go public. They got demonized. They got attacked. Back when mainstream media was like God in this country. Back when it was totally trusted. And if you go back to what they said back then, it was basically all accurate. On target. And that's where Barry Goldwater and everything else we've seen in Ron Paul came from. So when you hear the media say, Donald Trump spouting Alex Jones information, he gets it from Alex Jones. I'd love to say that was true. And we've had conversations on air and off air, and Trump does agree with me on a lot of things because we're seeing the same thing. And he's advised by people like General Flynn who understand how the real world works. This isn't like some political view we have that's our opinion. Global government's now out in the open. And it's exactly as the founders of the John Birch Society said it was back in the 1950s. And these people put everything they had into fighting this. Everything. They sold their companies, you name it. These are the folks, are, are the reason we're even able to put on this defense now. But here's the good news. Even if they steal this from Trump, and he's an imperfect messenger, everybody is, I think he's going to win. This is the beginning of the end for global government. And they admit that in the Financial Times, in The Economist, in their publications. They are chicken with their head cut off, freaked out. Now, they admit authoritarianism might still work. But they've got to take the gloves off now, which makes it a lot harder. So the reason I bring up the John Birch Society is you have to understand, folks, our resistance to this started a long time ago in this country and other areas and is now a global phenomenon. And so if you think we're in trouble now, look at what we, 50, 60 years ago, almost no one knew about this. So we've come a long way. Most Americans know the Federal Reserve represents a bunch of private interests and isn't federal. Most Americans now know about global government. They know about NSA spying. They know about... Government picking winners and losers. They know about the uber rich wanting to make us poor. And once that paradigm shifts, the class warfare doesn't work anymore. So we're in a race right now, a race against tyranny. William F. Jasper, the New American Magazine, newamerican.com, uh, great news site as well, uh, joins us. There's so much to cover. I, I've got evidence of them to, to, to have early projections and, and how they're going to announce that Hillary's won early to turn folks away and try to sew it up. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, we've got other uh, information we're going to get into, but the good news is Trump is surging in every poll, even polls that sample way more Democrats. They're in panic mode, and there is good elements of our government that are now leaking information. It's coming out. It was not, not the Russians. This is an incredible time to be alive, and so William F. Jasper uh, is our guest. I kind of set the table there with this epic fight, but what is it like for you being involved for 30-something years, your parents, early members, you thought they were crazy, World War II vets, you know, saying that our government was working with communists. You investigated their claims, found out they were right. I mean, I'm kind of recapping your story, but you've been a you know, member since you were, you know, a young man. To now see how we've been vindicated. Uh, my dad, you know, giving speeches when he was in high school and college about this. He's been vindicated. I mean, uh, thank God for the folks that have been out there. And it's not about the credit, but it's understanding how now worldwide the movement the John Birch Society started is now the worldwide resistance. Uh, not not in the actual organization, but in the spirit of it. Is that not accurate? Well, uh, I think it is, Alex, and I thank you very much. And uh, a great deal of that uh, can be credited to you. You've done an amazing job in the last uh, decade, the last couple of decades. Next month will be my 40th year uh, in this fight. And uh, so I, I have seen a lot of crazy, wild, and terrible things happening. And... Uh, I have to say, this election cycle, this current uh, uh, cycle that we're in right now is the most amazing wild ride uh, that we've ever experienced with all the things that are happening, all the things that are coming out. And uh, it is a very exciting time, and it's a very uh, sobering and, and in many ways a frightful time because so much is at stake. We are now down to the wire in this battle of nationalism, Americanism versus globalism. And uh, uh, we don't know exactly how that's going to come out, but uh, we did not think 
weeks ago, months ago, that it was going to be this close. The, the, the way the media had stacked it, the insider globalist media had stacked it for Hillary, uh, as you reported, as we reported uh, last this past June, the, at the Bilderberg uh, summit, it was all stacked with uh, Hillary Clinton's people, stacked against Trump, and stacked against the other big issue at that, at that moment was the Brexit in the UK. And I think, and we reported and we said and we opined uh, since then, that the way the Brexit vote uh, uh, came out in the UK in favor of exiting the EU, uh, in spite of the Project Fear launched by the, the British Conservative Party, the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrat Party, a, a, a sweep of all the parties except for the UKIP, and with all of the media, all of the banks, all of the big uh, globalist corporations, uh, the establishment uh, think tanks and establishment economists all say, warning the British people that the, the island would uh, self-destruct and Godzilla would eat London if, if they voted for the Brexit. Nevertheless, I, against all of the polling, the British people uh, surprised us all and came out in favor of the Brexit, in favor of leaving the EU, which is, has been a monstrous attack on their national sovereignty and the national sovereignty of all of the EU member nations. And so uh, we said at the time, I uh, said in my uh, opinion pieces at the time, that this was a very sobering thing and it was a very exciting thing uh, for us because it presaged what was likely to happen with the same odds in the Trump-Clinton uh, matchup. William and F. Jasper is our guest, New American Magazine, NewAmerican.com. If Trump gets in, if they're unable to steal it, how will they counter strike? Obviously, they've tried to now bring the, the UK down economically, but the people see through that, kind of like Hitler in the Blitz, it only hardened the Brits to fight harder. Now that global government's out in the open and they openly threaten to implode our economy and they openly threaten to do all these horrible things, you know, if we elect Donald Trump or burn down U.S. cities, it only illustrates the fact that we do have this alien foreign corporate system over us that is in the news financing Hollywood uh, today to openly say white males are inherently bad and should be, quote, killed. I mean, the rhetoric of these people is beyond anything I ever even saw Marxists put out. It is... It is the most virile, bizarre, authoritarian, insane asylum garbage I've ever seen. What's behind that? Well, that's part of this whole culture wars, which is the, really the setup for all of the change of our, of, our, uh, of our whole system. If you capture the culture, that is the entertainment, the education, uh, all of the uh, methods and means of uh, transmitting to the younger generation, uh, what uh, uh, what this country is supposed to be up about and the world view, uh, you essentially have won. And that has been uh, uh, the principal uh, psyops attack of the communists and of the conspiracy from day one, going back over 100 years. And it's been the principal means by which the globalist insiders working together with the communists have accomplished the same thing, assisting uh, the transformation of our culture uh, through, uh, through entertainment, through education, through propaganda. You can convince uh, one of the most uh, uh, potent examples of that, of course, is the acceptance uh, by the younger generations now of homosexuality, something which a generation ago was so abhorrent that it wasn't even mentioned. Uh, but if you constantly, on the uh, network uh, television sitcoms, uh, soap operas, etc., present people with homosexuality, with uh, 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 perverse sexuality of all kinds, pornography, uh, you're going to wear down the resistance to that. And that's what they have done. And the same thing with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, gender politics, with race politics. The very people who claim that they are against hate are the ones who are engendering hate. They're particularly engendering, and now, as you point out, coming right out in the open and demanding hate for European uh, culture, Christian culture. And it's uh, mainly white, white people health. pushing it. And again, you know, they use these football issues of sex and things, they admit this, to divert off the financial thieving 
the spying, the, we're all losing our rights, and they just get us all fighting with each other when we were all basically getting along before. But how do they square this idea of announcing world government, having the Pope push world government, global carbon taxes, you know, Time Magazine, Newsweek, the Financial Times of London, we need world government, it needs to be unelected for your own good, carbon taxes, but then they separately say it doesn't exist, it's insane if Donald Trump talks about it, if Donald Trump talks about the TPP. I mean, th there was an article a few days ago in Bloomberg saying, yes, cities are passing laws for illegals to vote, and we should have illegals voting, but Trump's against it and it doesn't exist, he's insane. They're actually writing articles that are like meant to be mentally ill now, where it says, the illegals are voting and we need to make more vote, but Trump's insane, they're not voting. I mean, I'm, if, if, or they're, right. yes, world so, government's so here. The, the common sense uh, American would go, okay, uh, we're, we're not supposed to be having illegal aliens vote, uh, but when somebody makes a common sense uh, proposal or passes legislation- They scream for, racist. Uh, for voter identification, uh, then automatically you're a, a xenophobe or racist. Sure, and, but I'm asking you, you're a smart guy. Th there's this new thing where they go, we're setting up world government, but we'll call you racist if you say it exists. It's almost like they're trying to break us or something by openly engaging in nonsense. I mean, I'm seeing a new a new assault now of like nonsense. Well, and then that's one of the benefits that we have seen with Trump's ascendancy is that he has called this political correctness, this brainwashing, this propaganda for what it is. And uh, many people uh, have been afraid to criticize anything because they're afraid of the racist label. They're afraid of being called hateful. They're afraid You're right. So his biggest thing hateful. is being brazen and getting us out of our comfort zones. Yes. And uh, so uh, I was just at uh, the United Nations the week before last. I've been a correspondent there for 30 years. Uh, they hate me. I hate them. That's one uh, hate I will admit to. Uh, but they, they frequently try to stop me from being uh, accredited there. I have been accredited there for three decades. Yeah, that's a perennial uh, deal where they try to kick you out or stop you. Right. And I don't know whether they're going to accredit me this time. They were, they've gone through a new procedure. And the day before I arrived there, I read a story in the uh, Canadian financial press uh, that they had instituted a new accreditation process for alternative media for those who represent advocacy uh, positions. So uh, I'm sure they're going to uh, uh, give me a tough time about getting accredited. Uh, but while I was there in New York uh, at the UN, uh, we had just gotten a new Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, and he's a buddy of Hillary Clinton's and Bill Clinton's. He was the president of the Socialist International. And the Socialist International proudly traces its, its lineage back to Karl Marx. It is the largest organization of communist and socialist organizations. He's the former prime minister of Portugal, president of the Socialist International. Now he's the secretary general of the UN. Prior to that, he was the man in charge of designing the refugee program that flooded Europe and is trying to flood the United States. He worked there with Peter Sutherland, the chairman of Global Sachs International, and with Anthony Lake, uh, the institute. And again, the biggest Center. banks, what the John Birch Society has done, it was the first to do, was, and then Barry Goldwater was the senator, obviously, was in there and able to see the documents and confirm what you were saying, what your parents were saying, others were saying, is that, and what Welsh was saying, obviously, was that the ultra-rich want to get rid of a free market and have a monopoly, as John D. said, competition's a sin, and that's why they're always caught running the communists, running the socialist, running the Russian revolution. It's a, it's a plague. I mean, don't we almost have to apologize to the Russians being from the U.S. or England because our country's money and people contributed to the overthrow of Russia? Well, absolutely. Uh, and, and again, we want to make a distinction between the Russians and the communist regimes yes. uh, that ruled them. Uh, it, it was not Russians per se. In fact, most of the Bolsheviks, the communists who went in to affect the Bolshevik Revolution, were non-Russians. Yeah, they were from uh, New York so, and London. Right. And uh, so this is the thing that m many people on both the right and left don't understand. Many of the Bernie Sanders people who think that Bernie Sanders was opposing Wall Street, that he's an anti-Wall Street guy, just like Hillary Clinton. Some of them see through Hillary because... It's very obvious. She takes huge 
uh, cash uh, fees from. She's Goldman the biggest Sachs, Wall Street uh, candidate ever. BlackRock, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, etc. Yeah, she's the most connected Wall Street uh, funded politician ever. And yet, uh, so I mean, she is comfortable and happy with the top one percent of the top one percent. And yet, she she uses this populist rhetoric, this working class uh, appeal. To, oh, she even uh, talks I, in fake hick accents. It, it is so, yeah. she'll talk to a Hispanic group and put on a weird accent. She shows up in a black group and goes, look, soul food. Or she shows up in a Hispanic group and goes, look, hot sauce. And then she goes, how are you doing there today? When she's in Kentucky. I mean, talk about a fake. So, th but this is what uh, we're dealing with at the highest levels. Uh, complete phonies and monsters who are posing as champions of the people while they are actually working to concentrate, centralize all power. And this is where you see the key uh, uh, important issue with the globalists and the communist socialists cooperating. What do both of them want? They both want total power, concentrating political, economic, social power all in the hands of an oligarchy, a few. That's a jad in the communist uh, uh, countries and, and still have in the communist countries. That's what we are, are getting more and more here as our free market, free enterprise system What's left of it is eroded and destroyed piece by piece. And, 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 and let me just add, William F. Jasper is joining us, the editor-in-chief at the New American Magazine, the preeminent publication everybody should subscribe to, especially to give to people. If, hey, you want to know what's really going on? Read this. I mean, you talk about Veritas. It's it. Uh, and when we come back from break, sir, I want to just uh, ask you in the final segment we have, what the world will look like if they succeed? Because you, unlike anybody else, have studied their own documents, their own admissions, what they want to set up. And it's so nightmarish that I get why people think we're conspiracy theorists because this sounds insane. But if you look at what Hitler wanted to do or what the Soviets wanted to do and other, you know, command and control utopians, it's always over the top unbelievable. And that's why each generation gets caught by it because the average person doesn't think like this. So we'll come back with William F. Jasper in a final segment then. I've got big breaking news. And into the third hour today, Colonel Schaefer who blew the whistle uh, on Hillary and Obama being behind ISIS and Al-Qaeda. He's going to join us with the biggest intel yet uh, about what's happening currently in the world and surprises. Surprises are coming uh, today and the next few days. Infowars.com. Four days out. Stay with us. And it's not that I'm that good. It's that people are that hungry for freedom. A very humble man who's about to join us, Dr. Ron Paul, former congressman, the modern progenitor of the modern liberty movement that, that Donald Trump is driving right now and in control of. He always said, it's not about me, I'm just a focal point of this. And he was known as Dr. No, because he would never vote on things that weren't 100% constitutional. And I respect that. But there's a paradox here, and we'll talk to him in one moment, and then, and then get into the whole waterfront and where we go after this election and the great work uh, he and his son and others are doing at Campaign for Liberty. But there is a paradox. When the whole establishment's against Donald Trump. We know he's not perfect. God, far from it. I wish he had Ron Paul's brain. <laughs> but but obviously the system doesn't want him. So it's, it's, it's a major move against them. And I just want to get his view on that out of the gates here in just a moment. And I just love what they're doing with multimedia and all the stuff they've launched. That's the future. 18 million people just on our streams on Facebook and YouTube just since yesterday. 18 million people people. Folks, I want to have 100 million by tomorrow. Imagine how that you throw that in the face of CNN. They're having peak ratings right now, even though they've been plunging kind of a dead cat bounce. They're only getting about a million people watching an hour. They're a joke, people. Again, it's not that we're that good. They're that bad. So this is a referendum on the establishment. And it's got to feel good to Ron Paul. I'm going to talk to him here in just one moment. What a lonely guy. 20-something years ago, couldn't get one co-sponsor to audit the Fed. Now it's a household word. People know it's the enemy. They understand it. So what an American hero we're about to talk to. Briefly, Buckley Hammond, uh, about six months in the making. We have the free app, Infowars.com, forward slash app, the audio, the video feeds, the free podcast, all of it's on there. But we have now are launching. You're going to be back in the next hour to talk about it more. Uh, on Election Day, uh, you are now launching uh, the paid app so people can actually support the broadcast. And it's revolutionary because all of our reporters will do live feeds just to the app. I'll do special reports every day just to the app or die trying. And it'll be archived. Then we're going to add other auxiliary reporters to the app, people we trust around the country, to do reports live that are archived. A lot of technology goes into it. It's also got discounts on it uh, where you get to 50% off on many of the items, our best sellers. 
and, and, and at cost. So you get the app, it's very inexpensive, and you save the money the first day on items at InfoWarsStore.com, and you're funding the revolution of liberty. So briefly, because I want to get to Dr. Paul, who we just got on the uh, Skype line here of the satellite, Briefly, uh, get into that uh, new app, Buckley, and how folks get it. Absolutely. As everybody knows, here at InfoWars, we are on the front lines of the info information war. And as anybody can tell, the mainstream media has been completely in the bag for the globalists. And so we're doing everything that we can. We're adding all the weapons to our arsenals that are possible that are out there. And what we've developed is a brand new app. It's called InfoWars Prime. It's available on iOS and also uh, Android phones. And essentially what it is, is it's an insider look behind the scenes. Uh, to everything that happens here at InfoWars and also direct deep discounts that are available only on this app. And it's a, it's a uh, right now, for a limited time, we have an introductory su subscription rate of only $4.49 a month. That's $44.99 a year. That's half off the standard rate. And the app will pay for itself with the unprecedented exclusive deals available only in the app. So go look for InfoWars Prime on either the iTunes Store or the Android Store and download this app, sign up for the subscription, and you will see lots of behind the scene videos from Alex Jones, myself, all the uh, all the reporters, and on the scenes videos. And There are going to be dozens and dozens and dozens of things a day. We're going to put so much energy into this. This is going to be gigantic. It's going to be, it, it, what it is is like, it's, it, it's a YouTube for us, okay? It's really a YouTube for live streaming and archives, and it's just as good as YouTube, and, and, and it's our own platform. It is the future. A lot of work went into this. It's a game changer. Four ninety five a month. Infowars.com forward slash app. Download the free app, and right there on the free app, you can sign up and pay four ninety five a month and get the upgraded app. Buckley, we will talk to you again soon. By the way, you've been spearheading this for a year in development. Great job. Thank you. All right, he's only with us for 20 minutes till the end of the hour. Former Congressman Ron Paul, I already introduced him, the omnibudsman of liberty. Uh, Dr. No, the guy that never compromised with tyranny. We appreciate you coming on with us. Thank you. Good to be with you, Alex. I could ask a lot of questions, but just out of the gates, what do you think of this election? <laughs> I think it's chaos. I think it's a reflection of where we are economically speaking, where we are monetarily speaking, where we are on our foreign policy. Totally chaotic. The people are angry and upset, but I don't think they've quite figured out exactly where the problem is. They don't think in philosophic terms. They think in political terms. The problem is not political. The political chicanery that goes on is a reflection of bad uh, philosophy. Whether it comes to economic policies, this whole idea of Keynesian economics, it's a failure just as socialism has failed. Our system has failed and people don't quite see it that way. A inflationism has failed. The central banking ideas have failed and the foreign intervention has failed. And yet they still think of details of, well, maybe we need a better manager. Maybe we ought to do it this way, that way. We shouldn't go into this country. We should go into this other country. We shouldn't spend so much money here. No, they miss the whole point. They, uh, what we need is an understanding of what true liberty is all about and why that's an individual matter. It's not collective. And quite frankly, I spend my time talking to young people because I think that's what we need. We need an educated new generation that will be more uh, intense on relying on liberty rather than relying on the political process where they're trying to get one advantage over another. Do you have any predictions for this election that we're now in? Well, my prediction is that not a whole lot is going to change. I think the momentum is so great. There's a lot of good intentions out there. But I think that the spending is going to continue. Uh, I think the printing of money is going to continue. Uh, the deficits are going to continue. I've become cynical over the many decades I've been involved. Uh, I mean, even if you go back to the Ronald Reagan era, I was so excited about that. I was a spa supporter of his in 1976. And yet uh, when, when uh, he was in, the debt went up, the spending went up. And, uh, you know, when, the, high, when uh, the Congress finally was controlled by Republicans uh, and the Senate and the presidency, guess what? We spent more money than the Democrat. That's so right. I'm rather cynical about the whole thing. The momentum is great. And as much as we look toward, and I certainly do look toward the positive side of the people waking up, there's a lot of people out there that want government. And I think the, the, the result of this election will be that probably 97% of the members of Congress are going to be reelected. You know, it's going to be pretty much the status quo. And uh, I, I think we have more work to do 
in the intellectual sphere, the understanding of economic policy, the understanding of the nature of money, and uh, then that will eventually be reflected in our members of Congress. You, you mentioned in the introduction that I've done some work on the Federal Reserve, but I, I, I worked hard in the Congress, I, and especially when I interviewed the chairman of the Federal Reserve Boards on various occasions, but my, my uh, approach was to reach the people outside of Washington. So it was changing their understanding and their minds. It finally got to the congressmen, and they finally voted for the, you know, at least in the House, they voted to... Well, sure, we're, I mean, we're starting to see reform that seemed impossible. And the reason I go there is this. I know you're a purist. That's, that's why I respect you. And, and, and you've always stuck by your guns, and that's the way to do it. But expanding on that, I mean, you've got the best voting record probably anybody, you know, since, since Thomas Jefferson. But if we expand on that, the, the incredible awakening, people know about the TPP, they know about globalism, they know about vote rigging, they know about the Federal Reserve. What is it like to watch Trump? And I know he's not perfect, bad on tortures, iPhones, you know, surveillance. He doesn't get a lot of internet stuff. I mean, he admits he's, he's kind of a troglodyte when it comes to technology. But what is it like to see the movement that Barry Goldwater and the Liberty Movement and you grew, the American people grew, undoubtedly Trump is a, a, a libertarian-style insurrection into the Republican Party. They see it as outside. They're trying to reject it. The libertarians have been taken over by the Democrats and Republicans. They've got Johnson and the other guy, uh, well, inter basically endorsing Hillary. That's outrageous. So all I'm saying is not an approval of, I'm not trying to get an endorsement of Trump. I'm saying, what is it like for you to see the liberty movement basically in the hands of Trump with Breitbart and others, and I think Breitbart are good folks, intending to fight on even if this election stolen? All I'm saying is, Coexisting as original patriots, uh, you know, like yourself, uh, how do you see that coexisting with what's happened with Trump? Well, you you admit that he's not perfect, and I'm in the business of trying to present the case for liberty and not water it down. And those who are more involved in politics, back and forth, and they say, well, a little watering down, a little acceptance, a little bit of hope, a little bit of prayer. Uh, you know, I don't have no any gripes with that, uh, but I think you, you have to be realistic that where are we today under those circumstances, and if you water it down a little bit, you know, I used to say when I was campaigning that, you know, if, uh, if you talk about food stamps for the rich or the poor, and you say, well, there's people in need, so we have to help them out, but there's only 3% of the people who need help. So let's say, let's say, let's give help to 3% of the people. You give up 100% of the principles that you're dealing with. So that's why if you water it down a little bit, and I understand it, and if you're a political activist and you love this party stuff and you have high hopes, eh, get people involved. But the only benefit comes from people changing their minds and their understanding that people's attitudes have to be so sound that they reflect on the members of Congress. I don't think the people in Congress, you know, in hopes that they will change their position a little bit, that all of a sudden the people are going to wake up. Right now, there's too many people. Uh, you know, I had a lot of young people came, that came out during my campaign. But, you know, it was, uh, I was more discouraged by the fact that Bernie Sanders got bigger crowds and he says, I'm a socialist. So I knew, boy, my work is cut out for myself. You know, there's this. So I'm dealing in that area of changing people's minds. Because quite frankly, I think that uh, if we have an intellectual discussion between what uh, free market is and socialism, that we can win this. I also work under the impression that uh, getting 51% to vote one way or the other isn't the important thing you need. 8% of the people who are the thought leaders in the country, the people who write the books and write the magazine, and people like you that have an access, uh, you know, to, to the public. They're the ones who have to understand it. So I, I'm too discouraged about, you know, uh, nitpicking and changing a thing here, this policy here, this, except this, this isn't good, a little protectionism doesn't hurt anything. No, I gotta, we've got to okay. change the whole system. I, I, we got to change the whole fraudulent system. Yes. Ron Paul is our guest. We got to change the minds, minds of the people. That's what's happened, and uh, you can only do that one person at a time. Ron Paul, LibertyReport.com. You've got so many great sites, TV shows, radio shows. I hear it all over the radio. I mean, it's wonderful to almost see you freer now that you're not in Congress than you were before to really educate. Yes, and I and I feel good about it. Uh, that, uh, you know, there's still an audience. Uh, you know, most people, when they leave Congress, uh, 
you know, the Alex Jones of the world, they don't call you up anymore. But uh, still, there are people that are interested, and I am pleased, and I have to admit it, that if they're interested in what I'm saying, you know, the, mo the most flattering thing that I had in Washington was I, I went my own way. I didn't try to I think that I could fight with them and change their minds or give great speeches, but I would vote if it, were by, if it happened to be by myself. I would do it in a quiet, steady way. But every once in a while, a member of Congress would come up and sit down beside me because I'd all be by myself voting, and then he would say, why do you do that? Which was a sincere question. So one person at a time like that, and a few of them changed their ways, and they become much more interested in... Well, no, that's the point. You did something with no market. support. You did something with no support in Congress and really changed the paradigm to a great extent to at least have a national debate. And that's why you know I model myself just, just, just historically off seeing what you and others have done with the wind blowing in your face over time, you end up turning the tables. And, and getting back to Trump, because it's obviously the big phenomenon in the election right now, the, the, the biggest reason I've supported him is so that I could also sit there and point out things that were wrong. And I've seen Trump actually change when he sees something is wrong, if it's actually genuine and not from the establishment. But obviously, uh, looking at Trump, because obviously people want to know what Ron Paul thinks about this, the entire establishment, the communist Chinese, the, the socialist pope, uh, the Mexican presidents, all the big corrupt combines, the Republican Party machinery that, that has attacked you and tried to destroy you. I mean, you know a man by his enemies, and Dr. Paul... Trump has the same enemies you had, the same enemies I have, and they are so opposed to him. I think that's undoubtable. So what do you think of that, and what do you think that signifies? Well, I, I think what you're doing is fine and dandy, and you make those points, and you can make inroads, but my approach has been been different. I take it out of the personalities. I never wanted, when I, I bet you can't find anything I've ever said on the house floor about, oh, you know, the president of the United States is a bum. Or are saying the Democrats are, you know, the Paul, and it's all the fault of the Democrat. No, I'm always going to be talking about changing people's minds about why printing money is lousy, why fighting wars overseas is bad, and not. And, no, I got it. You are a gentleman who is who is reaching out to people trying to change them, and Trump is more of a bull in a china cabinet. I think that's the case, and there hopefully that uh, there's room for both both ways of changing things. Because, uh, you know, I sort of enjoy the idea, though I never became a Trump supporter. I enjoyed the idea that right now we're winning on some of these issues. One is that it's a little bit more popular to challenge political correctness than it was a few years ago. And I think the American people are waking up. They're so sick and tired of that. Bingo, bingo. That's what I'm bad, saying, Dr. Bad, Paul, <laughs> it, it, is that Trump has taken what you built and others built and we built and magnified it. There's some imperfections there, but but I think I, I just heard you right. You said I'm kind of a Trump supporter on the fact that he's made it okay to have free speech and stand up against the bullying of the PC crowd. Okay, well, no, I'm I'm glad that has happened, but I see it in a in a different in a different sense because I use it in a different fashion. I would say, well, who uses which bathroom is a private property issue. We need to deal with the issue of privacy. Why do governments own these things? Why in the world would we be talking about this? Because people can't walk into our houses and decide to who's... Yeah, why is bathroom. the government involved? So, on Businesses should have whatever they want. You want to have the same sex? So want you want to have them, them separate? I want them, I want them to use the total principle of freedom, property rights, voluntary contracts, non-aggression principle. I want to always emphasize the philosophic uh, underpinnings of what we're talking about. And you're dealing, you know, with sure. one of the specifics and uh, you will go a certain way politically. But I've lost any enthusiasm for thinking that, you know, if we get a few more people in Congress next year, we're going to have a balanced budget. No, that, that's not going to happen. I never really believed it. Never went there with the intention. Went there as a surprise because I didn't think anybody would vote for me if I took this position uh, of, of, you know, saying that government says should be very, very small. Sure. You well, know, you know Nigel that, Farage. Uh, you take on everybody. You know who Nigel Farage yes, is. Yes, I you know him well. Sure. 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 And, and he said on air before that your work inspired him 20-something years ago, and that when a lot of folks he would, he, would, he would go speak to in England back when their party was tiny were listeners of yours and listeners of mine. So all I'm saying is it's got to feel good to know that you've affected elections in Europe, uh, that, that, that the libertarian ideas, the Von Mies Institute that you've been quarterbacking are having big effects. All I'm saying is Trump is basically, at his core, adopting all of that. 
uh, I don't think he's so much political as he is just kind of, you know, like a you know promoter where he agrees with, you know, a lot of folks he's around and says nice things to crowds he's with. But at his core, I know he really respects you. He's told me that personally. He said it in public. And I'm sad that, you know, Rand and he got in fights and things, but both people did things that were probably not too good. But that happens in the political campaign. All I'm saying is if a Donald Trump got elected and you had a free hand, would you be an advisor? Would you be the head of the Treasury or are you done? Well, no, he, he's, he's not going to because I'm dealing on a different level. I'm dealing in the theoretical and the philosophic. And uh, I don't think he's there. He picks up pit, bits and pieces and he uses it. And when it seems to be beneficial, uh, yes, he'll use it. I mean, if somebody asks me a question, I'm not going to turn them down. But just as, you know, I was pleased when I got one or two or three members of Congress ask me a serious question. Okay, well, I question. know for a fact. You know, I, didn't, I, didn't have the John, I didn't have the John Boehners of the world to come and say, Ron, I think what we need sure. is for you to be, you know, chairman of the committee. No, they had to work very hard to keep me ever from getting any. No, no, but with Trump, it's different. Because anything. what I'm telling you is I know now the inside baseball. Before he and Rand got in all those spats, he was looking at Rand as a VP, and I know for a fact he respects you and was wanting to talk to you about economic policy. Uh, so, I mean, and, and it's not patronizing. I'm telling you, you know, that Donald Trump really, really, uh, really thinks you know what you're talking about. And I get he's wrong on interest rates and things. You know, he's saying keep them low. I think we have to say they should go up. I mean, obviously, the point is he's open to it. He really wants to make the country successful. He understands we have unfair trade deals. And, 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 I, and I think that's why the elite are against him is he's not out to get the people. He wants prosperity. Now, Ron Paul okay. has, well, you know, wants prosperity, yeah, too. But, 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 yeah, but that's not where I am. I'm trying to change attitudes that would support him to do the right things rather than me saying, well, if I support Trump or say this and this and sort it all out, that's a political thing. What I want to do is go out and get people to understand you know exactly the philosophy behind it and why you have to reject the authoritarianism of a government. And so when he's right on those issues, he's going to have more support. It would be much more valuable for him to have support of tens of thousands of people uh, that may have been educated. No, in I get it. You're not about the political. Schools. You're all about the right no. philosophical economic move. Matter of fact, I think it's 90 percent of everything that we do. And I was in politics, but I was in politics for participating in the educational opportunity. Uh, that's also, uh, Alex, the reason why I have a homeschooling organization. Nobody knows a whole lot. I was going to bring that up next. Take lot. our children out of the system. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell us about that. Well, yes, and uh, uh, Gary North and uh, Tom Woods helped me start this, and they have a fantastic thing going. And uh, quite frankly, it's it's not gigantic. It's uh, we don't have the numbers that you have, but systematically, more and more, the public school system is is terrible in this whole thing of political correctness. It's all in the public system. So I think more and more people. I think if we lose our rights to um, property rights to have our private school system, I agree. I mean, th then we're in real trouble. But as long as we have that and more and more people are going to come because people are sick of, of the, uh, you know, government school system. So that's where I'm optimistic. And some people have told me that's probably one of the most positive things that, that I pro I'm doing at this point. Well, by the way, you say your own homeschooling. This philosophy. Sure, your own homeschooling deal has got a lot of people signed up to it. But the homeschooling movement itself is exploding. Folks can find out more at ronpaullibertyreport.com. Let me ask you this then. What is your gut on this election? I mean, he's ahead in battleground states. They keep oversampling Democrats 10, 15, 20 points. They've been caught in WikiLeaks, fixing polls, getting questions beforehand, rigging things. We know a lot of hanky-panky happened to you when you'd be winning in New Hampshire and places. Uh, I mean, what's your gut about the election tell you? Well, I haven't relied on my gut too much. <laughs> uh, sure, what's but, the analysis? I, I, I look at the financial markets, and unfortunately, the financial markets this last couple of days went against, uh, against Trump. Because, uh, you know, the way they were responding, they thought, oh, Hillary won something, Hillary won something. So therefore, it, what is so sad is that because it was interpreted, Hillary won, won something with the uh, director of the FBI coming out, that the markets, which are supposed to be free markets and capitalism, they responded with glee. The stock market skyrocketed nearly 400 points. That, to me, is sad, sad, a sad state of affair. That, well, that shows me, the control, but, 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 but uh, now there's some jitters. Now there's some jitters, is my point. So you're thinking oh, a Hillary yeah. win. Well, right now, I'm saying the markets think that. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, right now, I'm, I'm not predicting. I'm not betting any money. 
I'm also, I did a program today on my program that said the momentum, I just try to describe where the momentum is uh, after this election is over and I didn't pick a winner, that we are still going to spend more money. We're going to get bigger government. Taxes will not go down. The troops won't. Be no, no, no. I agree, but the and, awakening and momentum. Sort of thing. But the awakening momentum has never been bigger. So let me ask you this in closing, then, Dr. Ron Paul's our guest. Looking at this, I mean, just looking at Hillary, she's so bad. She's so evil. She wants war with Russia. I mean, just for world peace, isn't it positive that Trump doesn't want war with Russia and doesn't want to back radical Islam? Yeah, but I don't want to get into a debate on this. I would concede that, but then I could throw out something else where he might be more likely to cause trouble. But I don't want to get into that. That's back into the personality and bickering between, you know, political factions. And I think elections are phony. I, I think you, you, you might not agree with this one, but just think, you know, the establishment, the deep state, they've controlled these elections. We control them overseas. They control them here, too. So whether you had a Ron the end uh, or Obama, you know darn well the policies weren't going to change. You're hopeful. You're keeping your fingers crossed. I hope you're right. I hope things, you know, if... Uh, if a, if a Trump would win, that things would be better. But no, uh, Doctor Paul, is, this is why I respect you. Very, very deep. You're always honest. No, I agree with you. I came in this morning and I said they're preparing everyone for a Trump loss, even though he's winning. I said to I said to the crew, I said the deep state doesn't want him, and that's why he's good. He's not a Ron Paul, uh, but a Ron Paul's not a Donald Trump. You both have different you know uh, attributes. I wish you would become president. I wish he would, and and we'll see. But you're right. This election staged, and they've rigged the whole deal. And I think Donald Trump's right then. You just said it to say it's rigged. Is Donald Trump right on that? Well, it's been rigged for a long time. My first election was in 1976, and I lost by 100 votes on election and night. And it came out, it was fraud. Contest. And we found 1,350 votes of absolutely uh, fraudulent, fraudulent votes. We won in the course until it got to the Supreme Court of Texas. And then uh, they, we won there. And then the next day, they threw out one judge and said there was something wrong with him, had a new election. And of course, uh, we, you, you know, we lost the court contest too. But that's way back then. Uh, so there was... There, sure, but bottom line, yeah, I mean, I don't want to put country. words in your mouth. You're saying the system's been rigged for a long time. And you think it's rigged against Trump because the establishment clearly wants Hillary. I don't have any evidence of who gets rigging or whatnot, but I just think that uh, I, I think uh, because what I have to say will be more of a more of a challenge to you because I, I think that uh, some of the policies that Trump has supports uh, may be there because he's been told he has to take certain positions. Wow. All right. So you're saying it might be political. Dr. Paul, thank you for the time. Amazing interview. We look forward to speaking to you again soon. Wow. Power. That was the best ever. These get better and better. Thank All right. You. We're coming back in the next hour. Gerald Salente and more. Thank you, Dr. Paul. That was amazing. I'm Alex Jones. Spread the word. Spread the feed. Infowars.com. Beowulf. Grendel came for dinner. But then Grendel finally ran into the champions. And Grendel tried to get out the door. But Beowulf didn't turn loose of his arm. And then he took the door and started slamming it into his shoulder until he ripped the arm right out of the socket. And Grendel crawled home to Mama. And we've killed Grendel. Make no mistake. That's what Kane kept saying. Kept saying, they killed us. But we're still in the fight. He said, we're dead, but we don't care. We are dead. Very cryptic what Kane said. We ought to try to find that out. Everything they say is double meaning. He slipped up to and they said, we're going to give you all disabilities. Oh, boy, I tell you, I could see you, little beady-eyed rat. Now, their little demonic goddess has fallen, but she will strike back. Make no mistake. They killed us, but they ain't whooped us yet. That's right. They killed us. You know what? You poisoned our culture and sowed your racism and all your trash. And you know what? You're a failure, you little piece of crap. You are a dishonorable maggot. That's why you hate those of us that aren't, 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 aren't vampires like you, you little rat. Matt wanted to pop in. Anytime the crew wants to pop in, they're welcome. We've got a bunch of big guests. I haven't told you who's coming up yet. It's loaded with, with key folks. Obviously, Steve Pachanek's going to pop in. We're going to have Roger Stone back in the studio. He just got up. Uh, we're going to have um, 
Much another big guest here. It's a 52-hour broadcast. I, I haven't checked since last night. We had 20-something million people that had tuned in via the streams in the last 30-something hours then. So it, it, it's huge. I said, hey, let's get 100 million, but I'm very happy with it's probably 30-something million now. It was 26, 27 million last night. Just on streams and videos and things we've done in the last, you know, 36 hours or so then. Now it's 40-something, almost 50 hours. Uh, but, uh, Matt, uh, to win this, we've got to, like you said, organize the Trump people into just nonpartisan defenders of a rediscovery of the Bill of Rights and Constitution and then run for public office uh, in case the globals ever get back in control of the federal government. We're going to have to you know, really build the political defenses uh, yeah. uh, to resist. Yeah, so... This is some advice that, um, you know, I spitballed with Richard Reeves um, when we spent some time together on the campaign trail earlier this year um, for the primaries. And, I, you know, I've got to thank you for that, you know, for the ability to work here and, uh, and the ability to go learn firsthand, uh, you know, real politics. And uh, this kind of comes on the heels of that. So, you know, right now we're talking about starting this. The, the war has just begun. Um, it's, it's actually, I, I feel like the war's been going on for a little while now. There's been, like, this perception war. Um, I agree, but it's gone from a cold war to a hot war now. We, 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 just, we just actually won the Battle of the Bulge. We need to corner Hitler now, you know what I mean, <laughs> if, if you think about this uh, as a metaphor. And uh, the way you do that is you find the people who are wearing Trump gear. It, they're easier to find now than ever. Right, the people who are wearing Trump is my present. The people who are wearing Hillary you shake prison. Them, you find people. You wearing, shake their hands because they're trying to bully us and make everybody be scared and say it's racist and all this crap. Especially white Trump supporters and others, and, and, and Hispanic, black supporters, you name it. We have to all come together. We have to start having parties. We got to start it? having meetup groups. We got to have softball exactly. teams. We got to like go on vacation together and just say, "Hey, yeah, we're racist. This you is what real love's all about." You can't we're all coming together, you little bastards. You can't expect to make America great again just by voting. You got to go out. You got to make relationships with the people out there who are like-minded individuals, and you got to go out. You got to get in in groups, and you can become a delegate. That's right. You they're trying to they're trying to create to division and make everybody uncomfortable to be with each other because it's classic divide and conquer. Hey. We have to come together and show them the the real thing. Of course, yeah. It's it's time for the people to rule. You know, we we've seen it with the turnout in the polls for this for this election, and uh, yeah, wear your Trump gear loud and proud. Absolutely, and hold Trump's feet to the fire. Uh, he needs our support. That means defend him from the media when he's right, not when he's wrong, and uh, use this movement to expand the defense. The parasites don't want you free and empowered because they're scum and don't want to compete. But then there's those that want renaissance and want to see everybody flourish and who get off on prosperity and success. Hey, your wife's super beautiful. Wow, you, you can play great music. Wow, you're amazing. You're a great writer. I don't hate you because of that. I admire you. You add to the richness of our humanity. That's why they hate Trump. Trump, he's not out to get you. Is he going to be perfect? No. Will he have to make some deals with Congress to get stuff through? Yes, but if he uses his bully pulpit and isn't coward and isn't put into a corner and moves forward and prosecutes, prosecutes these people. He, he, I, I get normally you beat a political group, you want them to just go away for the betterment of the country. Their people are still in place. They're organizing riots nationwide. They're not going to stop. So I will tell Trump. You're amazing. You'll be George Washington reincarnated here if you, if you can now deliver. But they're not going to leave you alone. They're coming after you. And I understand, and I know Trump's smart. Trump's being nice on the surface. But now the Clintons must be indicted. And the other Republicans don't want that because they're involved too. Well, Paul Ryan and others, who we now know is a Democratic Party operative, it all came out, works with the Clintons, works with Hillary, trying to get deals for his family, jobs and stuff, Supreme Court jobs, Supreme Court justice. He, he needs to be arrested as well. Because they want to arrest us. They want to take our free speech. They say they want to take over the Internet. They say all this stuff. We're going to Gavin McInnes here at the bottom of the hour, and we're going to get Bev Harris on to see what happened with election fraud. Looks like Hillary stole some major states, but they couldn't stop a landslide. But, but here's just a compilation, a minute and a half, of Trump in his victory speech. It was all wonderful. And I get he was supposedly being conciliatory. Notice Hillary, though, stirred up her race garbage uh, in, in, in her speech. And all her surrogates who get direct orders from them are in hyperdrive right now saying this is a white lash and white people are bad. They don't want minorities, they're the majority now, 
to have the birthright of guns and private property and everything that comes with the West. I could, listen, white people aborted all their kids. We don't deserve to have the future. Fine, I'm just a person. I don't care what color you are. Just, just don't be brainwashed and on some frickin' plantation. Gavin McInnes is a movie star, founder of uh, Vice, um, and of course, big TV host, radio host, great guy. Everybody from you know 60-year-old you know, women to my 14-year-old son and 12-year-old daughter love him. We'll be talking to him. He'll be popping in in a moment from their headquarters in New York. But first, here is what I mentioned uh, from the compilation. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. That's right. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Supposedly impossible. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans. And this is so important to me. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. Now, Obama says working together, we should all root for Trump now. We will this is a total the bait and switch. Of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. It's been what they call a historic event, but to be really historic, we have to do a great job. That's right. And I promise you that I will not let you down. We will do a great job. Well, you kept your promises to me, both public and private. And I can only say that while the campaign is over, our work on this movement is now really just beginning. That's right. We've won a major battle, but now they're going to strike back. Uh, Gavin McInnes, again, let me give you his uh, website. Uh, you can go there. Um, it's uh, listed up on Infowars.com, compoundmedia.com. Uh, Gavin, so much happening. Uh, what's your first approximation of this? My gut tells me, you know, stabilize your rear deflectors, watch for enemy fighters. Uh, we, we uh, This war just started. Alex, you got to learn to indulge yourself. We're, this is party mode, at least for 24 hours. Right now, we here at Compound Media are focused on the first two Motley Crue albums, Too Fast for Love, Shout at the Devil. We've been drinking all night. This is, I feel like I just won the NBA. <clears throat> I mean, it got in the NBA and all my friends are going, hey man, can you help me with this car wash idea? And I'm going, yeah, 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 we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Right now, we just won the lottery. We just stole America back from the establishment. Yeah, th this is a devastating repudiation of the mainstream media of all the fake polls. And and, and they, they tried to hang Infowars around Trump's neck, which he was smart and actually you know took our whole operation and made it his blueprint. I mean, quite frankly, he's told me that personally. And it blew up in their face. And it shows how synthetic it is. Suddenly, they're all just silent. They don't know what to do. They're crapping themselves. So I agree. Uh, celebration for everybody. You in New York wearing Trump gear them, you know, absolutely groveling in fear. It's now time for the return of men. Go ahead. You know, my favorite word I'm hearing from the media today is inexplicable. Trump's inexplicable victory. And to me, that says so much, that one word. Because one, your job as a journalist is to explain things. You can't. So you're admitting in that one word that you don't know how to do your job. They're and going, uh, 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 they're speechless. Uh, uh, the, the polls, uh, racism, uh, uh, dads, uh, well, the poll, they keep talking about the polls. What happened with the polls? Yeah, moms picked up the phone. Dads went and voted. And the other great thing about Inexplicable is it shows what we all have known, and we, you and I have been screaming this for decades. The media is totally separated themselves from America. They have no idea. They've never met a plumber. They've never met a flyover blue collar dude. And so when these guys admit that, hey, I'm actually America. When you think of America, it's not New York and it's not LA. It's everywhere else. And journalists are going, well, what do you mean it's not New York and LA? I Googled it. And you go, yeah, dude, you never left your desk. You don't know your own country. Wow, I understand we should be celebrating, but I do, I mean, I wanna be ready when they you know, try the next assault. Uh, they're going, they're doubling down on all the race garbage, the riot garbage. 
Uh, I mean, this is just crazy. What are you expecting next? I feel like we're in the driver's seat, though, don't you? I mean, it, I, I haven't even, you know what's funny about this whole thing? I feel like a knight, and I've been handed my sword back as a patriarch, as a father. And my first instinct with this sword is not to go the way Hillary would and start getting revenge. Like, I haven't even looked up all these uh, uh, videos of, of Democrats crying because we are good at power. And now that we have it back, we're not vindictive. No, no, I agree. I, I agree that that if it was a normal enemy, that that you know we could just kind of let them like a fart in the wind, you know, blow out of the car. The problem is they will come back, and justice yep. has to be served. But 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 I'm open to your idea. Uh, I mean, take the high road and just kind of forget them and move forward, and and just hope they just blow away. Well, that's the ultimate question, but at least we're in the driver's seat. So the question I think is, you're in the plane. There's a gremlin on the wing. And he's attacking the plane as he always has been. Before, we didn't know the pilot. We didn't have a pilot that we could trust. Now we have a pilot we can trust. There's still gremlins on the wing. We still have to fight. I told, oh, that's the best analogy from the Twilight Zone. We got William Shatner on the plane. He keeps seeing it. No one's listening to us. Finally, everybody on the plane sees the gremlin. Exactly. So now we can deal with a little sucker. Yes. If we have to do a dry landing, we can do that. The pilot's on board. Everyone believes us about the gremlin. This election said, I know you're right. There is a gremlin on the wing. And now we're wondering where we're going to land. We're going to bring this country back. America was really reborn today. Because if Hillary won, I, I'll tell you what, I was going to give up and just, it's sort of, I went to Paris after the Bataclan attacks and I talked to Parisians there about their Muslim problem. And they were in total denial. And I just sort of, after five days there, I just sort of went, au revoir. France, you're done. You are irrevocably, irrevocably lost. And I was going to feel that way if Hillary won. And now that Trump is back, of course we got tons of work to do. Of course we got to keep sticking it to the social justice warriors. But we're doing it from the driver's seat. Finally. I totally agree with you. And, and, and once you finally see the gremlin, you can't ever put, or the goblin, uh, once you've been in a goblin's nest, I mean, there's no putting that genie back in the bottle. People now understand what's going on. Yes. Doesn't it feel good? I mean, I've got all these texts on my phone. Just congratulations. We got it back. I mean, hundreds of texts of people going, we did it. I can't believe it. Uh, Some guy just emailed me an old friend. Wisconsin too? Exclamation point, question mark. Yes. The whole country said, you know what? We tried it your way. We gave you the steering wheel and you crashed. So give me the steering wheel back. I'm driving from now on. I'm going to do what America was built on, which is... I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to take risks, and I'm going to leave people alone. That really is what America is all about. Is, and, and so, so it's not about who are winners or losers. We don't want just the dopamine to say we're winners. Uh, that's why I'm not even a big sports fan, because I don't want to go watch somebody else have a victory and I somehow live through it. But I, I, and I get sports, I played sports. With this, this is real blood sport. This is for the whole world, for all the marbles, with a bunch of really creepy, weird people. When you read their emails... We want to make people poor and dumb. We want to control them. These are really nasty, uncool people that no one would want to associate with in the real world. All of Hillary's people really hate her. They've all been bullied. They've all been paid by the big multinationals to say this. And I think a lot of the people in the media and the system now are kind of glad this happened because they were closet Trump supporters. So you know, we can't forget about that, that this is about coming up for air not being bullied anymore, and that's why it's so important for everybody to wear the Trump gear everywhere and then to organize, uh, again, just like you said, have fun. People should, of all race, colors, creeds, come together and say, you're full of it. We're not racist. We want freedom. We're going to go out and watch a ball game, a bunch of people of different colors, and, and, and be together and be real, not sit there and watch fake simulated liberal shows where there's these made-up neighborhoods where everybody's just living together in happiness. We should actually go out and do it to repudiate them because they are obsessed with dividing and conquering us. It's their only hope. Gavin McInnes. This is vindication. I mean, this is what America is all about. And Alexis de Tocqueville talked about this in uh, Democracy in America, where he came here. I can't remember when it was, 1800s, and he, he was just blown away by the way America works. He said that democracy is slow and sluggish and inefficient, but once the people set their mind to something, nothing can stand in its way. And I was getting scared. Like when Assange said that uh, Trump can't win because the big powers, the big banks, pharma, uh, the military, military industrial complex, uh, everyone, the, he's not in any of their pockets. So they won't let him win. The powers that be won't let him win. And I got to admit, I was talking to Ezra Levant about this. We were both petrified by that. No, no, I was too. But, but, but notice, clearly, 
there were some states where the, the, the polls didn't line up. He should have won. They tried. They did steal. But all the experts say, Bev Harris and others agree, you cannot block a landslide with a decentralized election. Yeah, you can bust in all the illegals you want. You can mess with the polls. And what we just learned last night was with all its flaws, with all its, its saboteurs, with all the gremlins on the wing, America can still win. The founding fathers are watching this right now and going, I knew you had it in you. I knew you could win. The people just beat the establishment. That's huge. I went to two polling places yesterday, and a lot of it was on a live feed. And it, it was Hispanic males with their sons and daughters, mainly, good-looking, strong, hard-working guys, pulling up in nice trucks. They want America. They are America. They were the folks who were actually coming over. I mean, like, 15 people. And I was only there like 20 minutes because they the poll lady ran me off. And you know, I wasn't breaking the law. I was like 100 feet back. And she was nice. I mean, whatever. Uh, the point is, is that, uh, this is a joke. I asked her out. She said yes, but then, you know, we didn't. Anyways, the point is, is that all this is going on and... And it was just so good that I guarantee you it was a bigger landslide than people even know. But I did see white yeah. women who look totally upset, alone. They don't know why life's not happy. They don't know the, the, the government and the media is their husband. And they were looking at me and just totally freaked out and just like they thought the end of the world was happening. Well, that's the problem with their narrative is it's not a good America to live in. It's based on fear. It says that America is a racist hellhole where no one has a chance and you need welfare and you need Social Security. You need all these government programs to help you thrive because you live in hell. And it's bad for them. That's the irony of all this. Our version of events, which is based on reality, is best not just for the white male patriarchs. It's best for everyone. They're like, oh, no, Donald Trump's going to get rid of taxes for people making 40000 or less. Oh, that's horrible. You know, what really happened also is the word bigot has been such a successful way to permanently brand someone as a witch in Salem. And now you have to be burned at the stake. Once you get that marker on you, you're doomed for life. And what Trump did is he went, yeah, yeah, I'm not interested in that word. You can call me that all you want. And you know what else? America's sick of the stigma. We're sick of the shame. We want to make- Well, Gavin, America listen to this. I mean, uh, uh, we played the clips, but we should play it again. Van Jones goes on TV and says, this is a white lash. This is the white people. It's a bad white people. It's so KKK Grand Dragon, and it wasn't record numbers of blacks voting for Trump. Hispanics, all of it, despite all their lies. And it's just the savage injection of race to control people and to make sure this plantation owner keeps you on the little reservation. It's so boring, too. I mean, ultimately, people are too lazy to be racist. We're too self-indulgent. If I meet a black guy who likes the same sports teams I like, and he's sitting next to me at the bar, what am I going to do? Say, no, I'm not going to enjoy your company because of some made-up bias if, I have? If, 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 I mean, I mean if, if I like some black artists like Jimi Hendrix, I'm not even thinking he's a black guy. It's, if I think a black woman looks good, I'm thinking she's even black. That's a woman I think looks good. Yeah, exactly. Remember when the black lady was driving around and saw the checkpoint got scared and ran from the cops and they, and they killed her uh, uh, in D.C.? Yeah, Sandra Bland. Yeah, it, it, it was terrible. But I was on air saying it's horrible that they've killed this woman. And the Black Lives Matter uh, type group was like, oh, you only care because she's white. And when it came out, she was black. I had people going, oh, Alex, thank you for caring about a black lady. I'm just sad an unarmed woman got killed. I don't, I'm not the one thinking what color somebody's skin is. It, it, it really gets to me. Well, that's the irony of their narrative. In this fear-based culture, blacks end up getting so scared, becoming so scared of cops that they go, oh, I saw on MSNBC that you guys just shoot me for sport. I mean, when there was a black woman during the Dallas riots who said, I have to worry when I go to the grocery store that I could be shot by a cop. And you go, so in this world that they've created for you, cops sit in grocery stores and peg you off like they're deer hunting or something? That's insane. And that's a horrible place to live. So not only do they make up a mythical universe, but they made a horrible mythical universe. If you're going to make up a lie, put unicorns in it or something. Make it nice. Why did you make such a terrible, horrible, scary, fake place? And, and, and again, you talk to folks because... We shot the female age Skrelix uh, video the other day out live in Austin. Owen Schwarter's latest video. You got to see this. And again, I'm not singling out white women. It's just that tends to be the, the group that's the most insane. And they're just, 
They're going, he's a homophobe. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they're just freaking out. I mean, 10 times what I'm doing right now in here. I don't, I don't even want to expend the energy. Just, ah, ah, you know, like, what's the thing I racist. And it's just like, what the hell? These people are in a freaking cult, man. Uh, just totally made up. And then you tell people, the police only shoot a couple hundred people that are questionable a year. Yes, there's some bad cops, but that's a very rare form of death. There's 340 million of us being struck by lightning kills like 50 times with the cops. And they just go, shut up, you racist white pig. You have no right. You're white. And you're going, you are a white guy telling me this right now with zits all over your face. You look like, you know, I'm not trying to be mean. But it's just like you're like some dumbass that lives in their mother's basement. And you're screaming at me that I'm an effing white male. So I have no right to, to exist when you're an effing white male. You know, it's really sad what we've done to women. I'm looking at these women right now. We reached into their bodies. We grabbed their ovaries. We ripped them out and we threw them in the garbage. Now, they've evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to basically be busybodies. I mean, they're good at dealing with hunting and gathering in the local cave and dealing with four kids, five kids, six kids. We ripped that away from them. And now they have all this extra energy and they expend it on the mythical universe and telling you you're racist and screaming about the patriarchy and all this dumb crap where you just go, Shh, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Your life is miserable. By the I way, mean, if they just one... come back to the patriarchy, they'd be you know, happier than a pig and you know what? And the statistics show that. It's not like I want to run some patriarchy. It's not that. Men kill themselves in wars. They explore. We are the slaves of the women. We are the worker bees, dumbasses. You're sitting back at the palace. You are the queen if you only take the throne. Exactly. Yeah, that's the funny thing is they want to be part of our world. Our world, do you take the coolest job? I mean, we both have pretty cool jobs. You take the coolest job in the world, 90% of it is an Excel spreadsheet going over costs and dealing with the mayush of these cables aren't working and we need to try to get an adapter. And these women bust out of the kitchen and they go, I want to be part of your world. And you go, okay, it's mostly number crunching, but- Or, or it's pouring concrete all day in 110 degree heat and having some guy <laughs> bitch at you. That's, that's our world. We built you a palace, as you say. We set you up with a pretty good deal because we are in awe of the miracle of birth that you can make a human being. So we go, Jesus, you're a wizard. Uh, here, wizard. In every culture, the women were actually worshipped as, as a goddess. So, you know, they're like, this is what we protect. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I don't know. I feel like that's most of church. You're sitting there, you're thinking about the miracle of birth, and you're just going, wow, thank you. Thank you for this gift. And when we see a woman, it's almost like they're closer to God because they're magic. So we build them a house and we'll work 24 hours. We'll truck, we'll, we'll deliver a package across the country, drive for three days straight on amphetamines just to make sure she's okay. And then she goes, no, I hate this thing. I want to do what you're doing and I want to scream at everyone and I want to take over and everyone's a bigot. And you go, why are you adding a computer virus into our perfect system? And if you're going to replace it, by the way, you should be replacing it with something better. They were trying to destroy us and replace our whole system with something way worse. Well, that's because they want to end the human species to create a manufactured system like the Terminator seeds where the plants don't produce more seeds. They're just turning us into a total commodity. And as Hitler said, first you get the women, then you've got the children, so follow the men. They are targeting women. And, and then they're just totally desperate and sad. And it, it's happened. But men have to be men again to turn this around. Compoundmedia.com. Gavin McInnes, you're a great guy. I got your big new movie out. Congratulations on everything you're doing. We appreciate your work. Thanks for having me, Alex. And thank you for getting Trump elected. Uh, the listeners, they did it. God bless you. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with uh, Black Box voting expert Bev Harris. I'd like to spit some beech nut in that dude's eye and shoot him with my old 45. Because a country boy can survive. Because you can't starve us out and you can't make us run. And these old boys were raised on shotguns. Because we say grace, we say amen. And if you ain't into that, we don't give a damn. You know what's crazy? I look at the incompatibility of what the globalists are trying to build and how disconnected they are and how really delusional they were that they could steal this election when history was on our side. If they stole it, it would have blown up in their face even bigger. So we've had a moral victory here. But they're now trying to take the Senate back from the Republicans that have supposedly won it. They're claiming in New Hampshire. They're going to try more of this now, okay? They're going to try to go back now. They're not going to announce they're challenging the election. That's why Hillary waited till 
three in the morning. I mean, we're up here at three in the morning waiting for her to finally come out, and then she just didn't. They sent a uh, scurrying rat out there, John Podesta, and, you know, and he's not at it's, it's, uh, satanic rituals. He's uh, doing hot dog parties, and you know, he's, he's off doing whatever else he does, and I'm telling you, I, I felt it last week. I saw it, too. It's the number one story on the internet because Drudge linked to it. That spirit cooking article blew a giant bloody hole in their side. They kind of crawled off to die over in the bushes politically, but they're still not completely dead. And they got a bow and arrow over there, and they're going to shoot us in the back. So we got to pull back, stay out of range while they bleed to death. And they're going to try to now go in and, and, and steal some house seats. They're going to do some other stuff. Beth Harris has a lot of integrity. She's been a Democrat, a liberal. She exposed what, what Bush did, and I was bipartisan. But it, it, there was more evidence of Republican fraud than, than Democrat. Both parties do it. And she said last week what Assange said. They're not going to let Trump have it. The fix is in. I'm no rocket scientist, but I've studied this. I saw places where she won by such margins, even their fake polls didn't say that. But they weren't in full control. You can't stop a landslide. I don't know Bev Harris's view on this yet. Uh, I want to find out, but I respect it. She is the expert globally. I'm not bragging. It's just a fact for us. People need to know how accomplished and on target she is. She's had more exposure of election fraud than everybody else combined. And that's not poo-pooing all those great folks. She is so effective. And when she was on a week and a half ago, it made national news. She released the information here on the, on the fraction magic with these programs they found around the country that have no reason to be there but for fraud to pre-program what's going to happen at the central system. And, of course, Soros is involved, and she just said it. You know, most of the evidence is it's the Democrats. It's Soros. It's, it looks like they're trying to do this. Well, and just a lay looking at this, being up all night covering it, having the polls for each state in front of me, it looks like they weren't in control of, of, of some areas, and that's why Trump won because it's such a landslide. But it should have been an even bigger victory. And so it looks like that, uh, that, that again, what Bev Harris has always said on the show for 15 years, you can't steal a landslide. Now, I, I'm going to find out if I'm, I'm wrong or I'm right here from her. Uh, but, and, of course, we, you know, we're pretty close to this right now. We'll know more as it unfolds. Uh, but uh, Bev Harris, I mean, is that a basically accurate what I said, or is it wrong? Uh, yeah, basically accurate. You did pretty good, Alex. Um, you know, as, as I was watching yesterday, a few things, a few observations. Uh, one, one thing struck me very early in the morning yesterday is they had been planning fireworks, and then they suddenly, uh, the Clinton campaign suddenly canceled their fireworks, and they did this early in the morning, which makes me curious as to whether, you know, their intel, they already knew they were in trouble at that point because it didn't make sense otherwise. Um, they may have still thought they could pull it off. Another thing that struck me, though, um, I have seen, um, particularly with the Democrats, um, a tactic where they'll take a, a concentrated blue area and hold back the results for hours and hours and hours. That's, for example, when Hillary ran against Obama in the primary in Indiana, uh, Lake County, which is East Chicago and Gary, I knew it. You know, it came in like ridiculous hours later, and then when uh, and suddenly turned the state to her. Right? Um, what they're doing when they hold back these. Uh, dense areas that is they're basically figuring out watching the results come in and seeing how much they need in order to uh to tip the thing and then they'll you know send in those results once they've got the amount that they, they need to, to feed it into the system last night they were holding back and it was ridiculous they were holding back detroit in michigan milwaukee in wisconsin uh, pittsburgh in pennsylvania in Nashua in New Hampshire. And Nashua has like nine wards. What the heck? They can't count, and they have voting machines. They can't count nine wards in six hours? I mean, no, they were holding it back because it's 7%. But I think as you continue to watch, uh, Trump was absolutely rolling through, mowing it down in the rural areas. And they didn't have enough. They couldn't, you know, they could hold them back if they want. They couldn't come up with enough to overtake that. Because you of can't have, you know, 150% of the population voting in right, those. Right, right. So, so it doesn't matter. You could fraction magic it, but you can only fraction magic it to 100%. You can't do anything more than that. And um, so, 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 I mean, as a top expert magic, on this, and I want you to yeah. roll through the evidence you saw, but, but, I mean, give yeah. us a boil down then. It's pretty clear then to see they tried to steal it, but the tsunami was so big it broke their back. 
Yeah, and, and remember, Fraction Magic is done by a, a local fixer or a regional fixer who has inside access. You're not going to do that in every single county, and if you're only going to choose certain counties, you're going to pick the big urban counties. You're not going to pick those small little rural areas. And what I was watching happen last night is he was taking it in the rural areas. And he was taking all the small counties to this tremendous uh, margin. He, she also wasn't performing as, you know, she, the other thing is she simply was not. She's not Obama. She wasn't pulling Obama's voters. But um, but in other words, if you're going to fraction magic it, you're, you're going to be selective about what you do, and you're going to pick where, the, you know, you have the greatest opportunity to do something with the least. Well, I agree with you that it was seismic the yeah. night before when they canceled the yeah, fireworks what display. He had... What he had was dispersed. Really tough to deal with that. You know, it's really tough to deal with that. So I don't know, but I, I, I do tend to, uh, my, this is just a gut feel and really is not based on facts at this point. Okay. But I think that it, it um, he probably may have gotten more even. You know, than, than was reported. I mean, well, that's exactly what I've been saying is that because I mean, I went to the polling place and, and, and I mean, and there were all these Hispanic folks, men coming over telling me they were voting for Trump. And I was just like, wow, there was not even a lot of white guys. It was a bunch of, uh, you know, women and Hispanic men voting and, 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 and just seeing that. And, and what I see on the street in a Democrat city, I, I don't see any Hillary stickers. There were Obama stickers everywhere. Well, it varies with a part of the country. I happen to be in California right now, and, you know, uh, uh, what I'm seeing here is folks are just mystified how, as to how it could happen. It has to do with what you're surrounded with, and, um, you know, that's the, the country is different in different demographics. But, you know, it was it was particularly telling to me. I can't tell you how weird it was to see that they had already canceled their celebratory fireworks early in the morning. Um, it's like uh, that could happen if they had their people on the ground telling them, you know, you have lines and lines and lines of people voting and they ain't voting for you. I mean, if that's the problem, they may have went, okay, let's at least make it a little bit subtle. You know, this was an interesting election and it's going to continue to be interesting because, the, you know, the next thing has to be that we haven't solved any of these problems, by the way. You know, we still have to get the ballot images released. We now have another state, Virginia, that has refused to give up the evidence of the election. We have now got Virginia, Washington State, Utah, Kansas, Nevada, uh, and uh, Indiana all saying that they're going to refuse to give over any evidence of what the election actually was. And so we haven't solved the problem. It is true you can't necessarily tamper a landslide, but you can do a whole lot of the uh, state and uh, and local races, and you can certainly do any of the uh, congressional races. So until they make the elections transparent and let us have what we have a right to have, which already exists, which is the records in the, in the machines, um, we're still not out of the woods on this, and it's just going to happen again where there's something... I think the problem there was she couldn't really plausibly win. Uh, now, Bev Harris, that is exactly my analysis and our crew's analysis watching this. Uh, Hillary absolutely uh, looked really freaked out the night before the election when she was campaigning. Uh, Bill looked really uh, defeated all day yesterday. You could see it. And I think it's clear they canceled the fireworks because they knew. They knew. Yeah, they knew. And they were hoping maybe they could pull it off by holding back these big urban areas. And see how strange this is. I mean, really strange. They're like, well, Detroit, which is Wayne County, Michigan, uh, we're at 80%. This is at like, at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning their time. Come on. That is not how it happens. The whole, I mean, it is. Not, there's no reason whatsoever that you can't have your vote total by 3 o'clock in the morning unless you're holding it back. So, and, and, and now all over the country, you just mentioned it, we can go over these Roger Stone has now joined us, former Trump campaign head, and obviously the media finally figured out one of the main actual brains uh, involved, along with Stephen Bannon. Uh, Bev Harris is here with us. He's here with us in the studio. Uh, I mean, I think it's important, even though Trump has won, for the integrity of the election, I got a sneaking suspicion, you're already pointing towards it, that this is, this is fraud against 
against uh, Trump. In fact, that's where the evidence is pointing. Beth Harris is a liberal. She is a Democrat. She has total credibility. Yeah. She's here telling you that. But still, we should just investigate because this is, you know, justice be done, uh, may the heavens fall. We're not contesting the election. It was a tsunami, a huge realignment for populism, a takeover of the Republican Party, a repudiation of their horrible uh, blue blood behavior. And let's just say it, racist behavior in many cases. This is beautiful. But, but looking at this, uh, I mean, can you recap that or expand on it about where we should look for the fraud and uh, why that's important? Well, you know, you, the, the bottom line, the, the takeaway on this is we still need to get the systems transparent so that we can verify the vote. I mean, yes. if you can't do that, then it's just um, waiting for some other disaster in the future. Um, there is one other thing that struck me that I'd like to mention. I mean, it really struck me as odd. There was a point in time in which New Hampshire was separated by only 96 votes, and yet... You did not, and by the way, and I think Pennsylvania at one point was separated by only 2,400 votes. Um, in a lot of states, this triggers, this can actually trigger even a mandatory recount. We did not see a peep, even in the closest, closest states, that there was even the possibility, even a discussion of any recount anywhere. And we would, ha we should have probably seen that. I mean, it's abnormal that we didn't with some of the very, at, at the stages where it was very close, you know, because the pundits have to have something to talk about. And that can signal, of course, what happens in a recount is great scrutiny of the vote count. It can signal, hey, we don't really want any scrutiny of this, at, we being Democrats, um, any scrutiny of this count, any further scrutiny. We're not even going to discuss the idea of any further scrutiny. Um, so that also kind of makes you think, hmm, you know, I mean, if you really are hard fought and you're separated by 94 votes, my goodness, why wouldn't you, you know? Um, so it makes you wonder. But, um, um, yeah, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't give me any more confidence in the process. It's, you know, it just doesn't. We basically, until we can verify the count, uh, which the records are already in the system to do that, they're just simply refusing to let anybody in the public see them, even though under freedom of, of information law, it's our right. So, you know, until they do that, it seems like they're hiding something. Bev, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just stunned here listening to you. It's, it's, it's so amazing. And, and uh, again, your maxim: you can't steal a landslide. Roger Stone. I also want to ask Bev Harris. It's just a political question for the lady that heads up BlackboxVoting.org, hacking democracy, top HBO film, the leading uh, election fraud expert in the world, who's just exposed uh, the big Kahuna with her engineers and software folks that discovered it. The fraction magic clearly in play here against Trump, but it all blew up in their face because it was such a tsunami. Um, Roger, I want to ask you this question, then Bev. I'm not a vindictive person. Napoleon, the first time he was defeated, was sent to, what was it, Alba, and then he came back later and, and, and millions were killed. He started a whole new war. Napoleon was a nice guy compared to these globalists. I mean, George Soros and all these people. It, it's not vindiction. It, we, we have to give them no quarter. They've got to be brought to justice for the crimes they've committed. I'm really concerned, and I, and I hope it was just conciliatory, he promised to lock, lock her up, special prosecutor, and the, the evidence is overwhelming. D don't we need to immediately, or I guess as soon as he gets in in two months, we have to bring them to justice. It's not political vindictiveness. These people are legendary criminals. Roger? We're either a nation of laws or we're a nation of men. Uh, either there are consequences on what the Clintons have done at long last, or they are able to continue to dodge justice. This is something a prosecutor in a court has to decide, but right. the real problem has been uh, ability to bring the charges, to get a, a fair right. indictment and trial. First of all, Bev, I want to salute you for the amazing work that you are doing. Uh, you know, as you know, we tried to track some of the, uh, some of the uh, exit polling to uh, be compared to machine totals. Uh, and therefore, we've taken a hard look at all the work you've done. And I, I salute you. You are an amazing person, and you have done amazing work. So uh, I, my Thank hat's you off so to very much. my hat's off to you, Bev. What's your view on that question? I mean, you're all about justice. I mean, if it came out Trump was cheating, I'd yeah. cover it. Yeah, you know, um, my uh, next book 
the title of my next book is uh, Black Box America, and it is dealing with the underlying corruption issues. I started studying money laundering, which is sort of by ne- by definition complicated, just like electronic voting is like, oh, my goodness, you go through this hope and that. I've been doing that for about four years, and I've been studying it off of indictments, you know, where I, they unravel it in the indictments. And, you know, uh, it, it looked pretty darn clear to me from for what, quite a while now that the Clinton Foundation is actually a money laundering operation. Uh, it does need to be investigated, and it does need to be investigated. I, I'm not going to say that there is guilt before it's been ascertained in the court of law, but it definitely needs to be investigated because uh, it just it just looks that way. Sure, and I mean, it, I, I mean, I know you were you're formally a, a. That may not be the president's uh, role. It may be the Congress's role, or, but there has to be a uh, an, an actual bona fide investigation. Well, we need an honest attorney general. We need a non-political attorney general, one who will right. go on the basis of the law. I can think of a right. half dozen people, men and women, who would be a, an exemplary attorney general. But we've had Eric Holder. We've had Loretta Lynch. We've had a succession. It of, better not be Giuliani. Uh, I, I don't think it will be Giuliani. Uh, he'll be too busy as director of Homeland Security. Uh, actually, I don't think I, I don't think the mayor will join the government. I don't think he has an interest uh, in joining the government. I'm not, I'm not trying to get on some bandwagon against him, but let me tell you, the patriots in the in the intelligence community and everybody they know about Giuliani and stuff, and it's just it's just he just needs to go. Uh, I understand your your views on him. Any way you slice it, though, he played an important. In fact, I no, no, he did. I'm not. I'm not here attacking Giuliani. I'm just exactly. Let's go to break. Final segment with Bev Harris. So you're going to continue on riding shotgun, co-hosting Bev Harris. Blackboxvoting.org. She doesn't ask for this. I'm going to do it for her. She's spent everything she's got doing this. It's a total passion. She's an amazing lady. She thinks she's had one book out. You know, for 20 years fighting this. She funds it all herself. Go give her a donation there and, and support us. We have free shipping store wide right now. Infowarsstore.com uh, and 30 to 40 percent off storable food. Uh, the great supplements. Infowarsstore.com or triple A two five three three one three nine. And we have the new upgrade of the free Infowars app. Four ninety five a month. There's all these special live uh, insider events every day on the new app. Final segment with Beth Harris. We've got Roger Stone riding shotgun with us right through 3 o'clock today, and then he's getting on an airplane. Um, I, he's telling me I should celebrate. You know, he was big buddies with Nixon. They reported one of his best friends after he was out of office. And Nixon could never savor anything uh, or, or ever appreciate, you know, a victory. Look, I do. I love everybody. But it makes me love the country and you that much more. And it makes me so frustrated because I see them all this race baiting crap and, and just the division and making stuff up. And I really want people to come together. And so I just get mad. You know, Van Jones saying this is a white backlash and all this crap. This was a backlash against NAFTA and GATT. It was a backlash against the mainstream media. I mean, the, the truth is Trump is not even conservative, okay? He's a populist. And Thank God. I can't stand Paul Ryan. I can't stand the, 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 the horrible, Republican, filthy establishment. They're just as bad as the Democrats. And here's an article in Fullwars.com. Kingmaker Drudge defeats establishment media with Trump win. We've all done it, but this is a repudiation of the polls. We told you they were fraudulent. This is a repudiation of the MSM. Now, before I go back to Bev Harris with final comments, they're telling me, plug, plug, plug. We need to fund this operation. Great. You're, we're dominating. With, you know, I'm, I haven't gotten the numbers. Last, when we left last night, it was 27 million people that had just tuned into video streams that we could track. Okay? All our videos for the 30-something hours before that, 27, 28 million. We haven't tabulated it yet. Again, that's not bragging. It's saying these people aren't a joke. They need to know they're a joke. MSM calls me. I don't do the interviews. They, they don't have real people watching. They got a bunch of zombie idiots watching. Anyone with half a brain isn't watching them. This, and it's not that we're even that good. They're that bad. So we got free shipping going right now, store-wide, InfoWarsStore.com, on non-GMO seeds, on supplements, on water filters, on everything you need. Uh, Trump is my president. It's about to sell out. It's a red shirt. It says Trump is my president. InfoWars.com on the back. It's limited edition. Hillary for president. We launched that. It's gone, folks. Other people are <clears> copying it. That's fine. I say limited edition. It's limited edition. When these red shirts are gone, they're gone. And your purchase helps fund the operation. Infowarsstore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And we have another shirt designed by Roger Stone available. The Bill Clinton rape shirt you've seen all over the nation and the $100,000 in prizes we've handed out. That, that contest is over, folks. I don't got that much money. But just it's just an example of guerrilla journalism, getting the truth out. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com is the supplements or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Bev, thank you for everything you've done. Other little... 
I mean, I know you'll more on the you'll know more on the days and weeks to come. But other little right. factoids or tidbits we should know. Oh, listen, anybody who is upset, any Democrat who is upset that Trump is the winner, has the DNC to blame. WikiLeaks email number 1120. Look at the attachment to that. It is a DNC strategy session where they are working to elevate Trump as the front runner because they feel he will be easier to beat. Be careful what you wish for, folks. Then they ended up, you know, completely screwing Bernie Sanders and doing all kinds of tampering with that. They pushed down the candidate that people wanted. They gave the people a candidate they didn't want, and then they elevated a different candidate artificially. It's, if you want to point a finger at somebody because you're a Democrat and you're upset about this, look to the DNC. because That's right. Well, it shows their disconnect. That's the responsibility right there. Uh, Bev, I agree. Uh, I mean, it shows the disconnect. That a they thought someone brazen and brash and Americana would would would, would be negative. They're in their own <laughs> echo chamber. They, it, they they have the opposite of the Midas touch. Yeah, yeah I, I just I, I mean I found I, I guess that email has been reported as well, but I I happened to find it kind of by accident. I I just went oh my goodness it's it's I think it's April 2015, and they're all having a strategy session as to how to elevate Trump, and they're saying because we're worried about Bush and we're worried about Cruz. Or worried about Rubio. No, no, I mean, that is a real one. You're right. We've covered it. So I just talked about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. And now, uh, we talk about a judgment problem. <laughs> These people have a judgment problem. Bev Harris, you're and, amazing. Can't yeah, wait to have you, you back up. Can't wait to have you back up soon to give us uh, more uh, post-mortem analysis. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with Roger Stone, Steve Pachanik, uh, Larry Nichols. Uh, I'm going to take your phone calls. Roger Stone in studio. Stay with us. Well, the former spy chief and head of psychological warfare, co-founder of Delta Force, Dr. Steve Pachenik, is joining us coming up. And there has been a rebellion in the intelligence community. The media tries to misrepresent that claim. You know, well, Pachenik isn't running the movement. He never said he was. The point is, it's just people everywhere. We're, we're the movement. You're the movement. Citizens are. Everybody. Human. We're just citizens here uh, uh, fighting a globalist takeover like the French resistance or something. This is real. Roger Stone's here. Pachenik's coming up in the next segment. He's riding shotgun with us for the next two hours. Take a little break for some lunch in a little while. We're uh, getting Roger some lunch. But, Roger, wow. Uh, you agree we need to go after them. They need to be punished. They need to go to jail. Not out of vindictiveness. Justice must be served. Plus, this is Day of the Dead. These zombies are going to keep coming back at us until their brains have been removed. Well, first let me address something Bev said because I think it's uh, crucially important. Because we've seen this before. If you read Hamilton Jordan's uh, biography... There's a whole section on how Jimmy Carter wanted to run against Ronald Reagan. Thought he was a simpleton. Oh, you said this a thought, few months thought, ago. Thought that he was imminently beatable. Uh, we saw the same thing here, where if you look at the returns in Detroit, in Milwaukee, in Pittsburgh, for example. Replay of Reagan. No other Republican could have won this. Had we nominated a conventional establishment Republican, you would have gotten the traditional Republican vote in those places... And we would have lost. Only Trump could have won this. So, uh, again, Bev's right. Be careful what you wish for. They Why are they so incompetent? I could. I knew Trump was the strongest from the beginning. Because they're elitists. They don't understand working people. They don't understand how average people think. And they don't understand their values. And they never understood Trump's appeal to working people. He speaks the language. We want to go eat a hamburger and drink a beer. They want to go devil worship and drink blood. They're yeah. just they just they're just disconnected. <laughs> exactly. Now the other thing to go to your point is, Trump is a man who means what he says and says what he means. You watch the debates. You can you can run them back down and rewatch them. He is going to seek justice for those who have broken the law. Now he doesn't think that he unilaterally can wave a wand and say Hillary should be sent to jail. There's a process, but they have avoided the process for forty years. And now it is time for it all to catch up with them. They need to be put through the judicial process. The Clinton Foundation is not a charity. It's money laundering. It's, it's a slush fund for grifters. But, but don't we have the total proof with the WikiLeaks from three weeks ago where we got to cover this up? There's like 15 of them we, that I saw. We got to cover it up for POTUS. He's in secret communication with this illegal thing. But this is like, God, we're all screwed. Draw and quarter whoever did this. This is totally illegal. We have them running around admitting they're committing crime, so dumb on emails, then admitting they want to cover it up. I mean, we, it's open and shut. 
We've always had the evidence. What we haven't had is an honest prosecutor who will take it to a grand jury so that justice can be done. Now I think you will finally have that. Uh, this We now go into a, what I think is a crucial period because personnel is policy. And the president-elect needs to choose people who reflect his worldview, who reflect his mindset. Yeah, no I, more old guard. Any, he needs to get patriots, new people, folks from the outside. He needs to get business people, doctors. He needs to get, uh, ed, he needs to get a wide spectrum. And he needs to avoid globalists. He needs to avoid neocons. He needs to av uh, avoid those who are tied to the mistakes of the past. He needs a fresh team of Tell people. folks how pathetic the mainstream media is. Uh, famous people, because it's on your phone, are calling, calling, calling Democrats who've been attacking. Now they suddenly are kissing your ass, asking for jobs. Uh, the job seekers now come out of the woodwork. First, there's the Republican job seekers, those who were never for Trump. They're the ones calling to say, I was with you the whole time. Can you send my resume? Can you send my resume? Then you've got the reporters who wouldn't give you the time of day, who misrepresented what you said, who attacked you. Now they want to know if they can get an interview with Donald Trump. This is the way the world works. This is why I left Washington when I did. Washington is the phoniest place on the planet. If you want to meet real people, you got a better chance in Hollywood. Well, exactly. And, and I want to just say this. What am I asking for from Trump? Just be true. Restore the republic. Cut taxes. Cut the debt. Uh, unify the nation. Uh, I mean, I'm not asking for anything. Just do what you said you'd do. Please, for my children, we'll be back. Stay with us. It's now November 9th, 2016. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and history is now being made. Never underestimate the arrogance of the Washington bureaucrat and banker class. They created this con that they were invincible. Now that America has tasted victory again, the spirit of the republic is rising. Dr. C. Pachinik uh, is with us for the next 40 minutes or so. Then Larry Nichols, who has just proven to be so dead on, is going to be joining us. David and I continues on, and, and we've decided whatever crew wants to stay, there's no pressure. We're going to just continue, not 52 hours, we're going to continue broadcasting right through tonight till as long as we can stay here. Because that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. And you're here by the tens of millions. I haven't checked the numbers. In the first 30-something hours, we had 27 million people just on Facebook and YouTube and on our own streams. Uh, it, it just uh, just on Facebook before it was it was like 10 million or more. Uh, again, th that's not even our main platforms. I had to kind of pistol whip around here, uh, folks, to m make people start putting our videos on Facebook six months ago. I'm joking when I say that that actually buggy whip people. But the point is, is that very exciting things are happening. We are ace of spades every time. Royal flush, blowing the living daylights out of them. But we have to prosecute them. These rats are not ever going to back off now. They are, they, they, they've always hated us because they know we're colossals compared to them. We're not here to screw people over. They're mentally ill and want to pull everything down because they're so spiritually ugly. Now, Roger Stone's riding a shotgun with us throughout the broadcast days, flying back out later this afternoon. I want to do some in-depth talks with him, but this is all kind of co-hosting here, just briefly because they keep telling me this. Yeah, Alex, you want to hire four or five more reporters and crew members and pay the bills around here. You need to plug, which I haven't done in days, our sponsors, and you need to stop skipping breaks, and you need to, uh, do, and I got Ted Anderson telling me this from Minnesota, I got them telling me, and I'm not bitching, I'm just saying, refuel us. You, there isn't anywhere where you can buy products that are better. We, we, we go out to the top producers and say, we want the most ridiculously high quality. And we're going to have it at a low price. And they just go, no one does this. Well, we do. Okay, whether it's X2 or whether it's DNA Force or whatever it is, <clears throat> free shipping store-wide, free shipping store-wide, InfoWarsLive.com, InfoWarsStore.com's umbrella site on non-GMO seeds, uh, high-quality storable food, everything there. InfoWarsStore.com or 888-253-3139. And Donald Trump has said it, and the media tried to hang it like an albatross around his neck. I'm not bragging. It really is true. InfoWars is at the absolute core of the rediscovery of America and the American system in 1776, not because I invented any of this, but because I rediscovered what America was in life and in the history books and more. And then for 20 plus years, I've been in the trenches learning this from every angle and developing a knowledge base that no one else really has. Other people have knowledge bases that I don't have. I'm not saying I'm some grand poobah. Let's just say this, this brain trust is being given to everybody and you're adding to it like a, like a, like a, uh, electrochemical supercomputer that's interfaced with the silicon world 
this is the new true AI system, uh, is we the people interface in the new media and overthrowing the entire technocracy they believe would be our enslavement. It will now be the delivery system to Valhalla, but we have to take it in our hands. And that's not utopia, I'm promising. That's reality. But it's an animating contest. Now, we will not be teleported there on a bed of roses, as Thomas Jefferson said. Infowars. Store.com is the Energon cubes we need. It's the fuel. You get high-quality products. It's symbiotic. There are things you need to reuse and have again, just like we need to continue on <sighs> breathing as the seasons pass, as the planet orbits. InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, StevePachinik.com is his great website. Uh, he's joining us right now, popping in. And, of course, we have Roger Stone here jumping any time, Roger. But what a, what, what an incredible time. Now, Pachinik, we're co-hosting, so just give us little little nuggets of where you see this going, what's unfolded. You know, we we talked this weekend, and I, I said I thought Trump was going to win. I mean, I knew they were going to try to steal it, and I, and I had a bad feeling. And Beth Harris was on. She's a liberal. But she said clearly they tried to steal it. But the tsunami was so big uh, that uh, it defeated them. So I, I think now asking you, what do we do next? I want your view. Uh, I mean, clearly, do you think we should just let Hillary sail off into the sunset? Clearly not. First of all, I want to congratulate you, Alex, and Roger for really initiating this American Revolution. It was not easy. It's an important idea that people have to understand that this was initiated by what we call the alternative media. Roger and I had worked under Reagan. We had worked under other presidents, Nixon. But this is really a revolution. And this was a revolution that people should understand initiated through your auspices, plus Roger interceding. My coming in, but it also belongs to the men and women who are in our intelligence service, our military intelligence, our civilian intelligence. Had they not performed, we would not have been at this position. And I can't tell you how important they have been to the integrity of the republic. It's not just the men and women who carry guns and fight our wars, the kinetic wars. This is a new kind of war. And, and, and let me tell you, in 1973, I was fortunate enough under the GI Bill to not only attend Harvard, but MIT. Not because I was so smart, but because I understood that at MIT, they were going to teach me something that had never been taught before. And that was the Internet and social media. 1973. My dad was at UT in the 60s. And they were talking about CD-ROM and social media then as well in the Plan 2 program when he was in high school. And, of course, you know that was a secret DARPA program. But that's exactly it. So we have to thank DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, and even the CIA for having initiated this type of modality that nobody could conceive. Fifty years later, we have been able to utilize it using you, Roger, many others, and the Internet to literally have a coup, which the Clintons did and attempted it, and there was a counter coup. There's no question about it. Without soldiers, without tanks, as Roger said, you know, the old line Republicans were useless. We were able to kick them out. And in turn, what happened was the Republic answered in a way that we'd never seen before. The voices that came through you, through the protests, through the meetings that they went to with Donald Trump, and the fact that Donald could articulate our discontent and maintain it at a phenomenal rate that even I was stunned. I, I got to tell you, as a doctor, psychiatrist, I've never seen anybody like Donald Trump. He was tireless. I mean, I had to go to bed at midnight, one in the morning, because I figured, oh, you know, this will keep on going. But truthfully, we owe a great debt of da a gratitude to the family, the Trump family, to all the people around him. They're warriors. They're warriors. And, 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 and Roger Stone here with us, former Trump campaign head. He's got... Well, Roger's an old line warrior. I mean, he and I worked for Nixon. I had a great, great respect for Nixon. And as I said to a friend of mine who's now meeting with Rumsfeld, I said, the spirit of Nixon, and I came in later on. Roger was far more involved with Nixon than I did. I really came in towards the end and then the Ford administration. But Nixon communicated with me, and he, that man was a genius. I mean... People really only understand Watergate, but they don't understand how brilliant he was. And he was a poor man. He grew up as a Quaker. 
He is, he, he watched his uh, brother get killed. He grew up with all kinds of problems that he was able to... Well, overcome. reportedly Stone was like best friends with Nixon after he got out of office. That's, That's what the New York That's Times says. I, I admire him, and I understand that. He, he, he never, was, never lined his pockets. He never used his position in government to enrich himself. Uh, they tried to say that in Watergate. It was false. He was, above all, a patriot. He was for a strong America. He was for peace. Uh, and he paid the ultimate price for it. But uh, And he made mistakes. There's no question. Closing the gold window, enormous mistake. The war on drugs, enormous But he wasn't a demon. Mistake. You had a question for Pacheco. No, but he was no, a patriot. Roger's correct. He, he was he a patriot. Did that. And ironically, the liberals come up to me and say, oh, my God, I didn't know that Nixon had created the Environmental Protection Agency. I didn't know Nixon had initiated NIDA, National Institute for Drug Abuse. I said, yeah. It, it doesn't mean we're all right-wing uh, neo neo uh, neocons. neocons. See one yeah. thing. One thing interests me, and that was the the um, the byplay of uh, last Friday uh, and Monday. Uh, like you, uh, I have very good sources in the New York Police Department. They assured me that the treasure trove of six hundred and fifty thousand documents that were found on the Huma Abedin Anthony Weiner server were political and legal dynamite. I mean, just evidence of treason, evidence of corruption, evidence of crime. Sex compromising. Evidence of pay for play, evidence of sexual blackmail, and so on. So how is it that the FBI director, who took months to go through 33,000 emails, could say, oh, we've been through all this and there's nothing there? Well, that's my next question for both of you. And, and I was told did, by sources well, and why did no one that they told Hillary, you better not try to steal it well, because well. we're going to bring all this out. Roger has a key point, but I will answer. Roger understands this because we've been in several administrations. Fear and collusion are one of the greatest dynamics that you have in politics. And the Clintons were able to collude with Loretta Lynch and James Comey. The reason why, Roger, he had to come out is because thanks to our military people, our people in the intelligence community, who were sick and tired of his acquiescence, of Comey's acquiescence, they allowed a lot of the emails to go literally right through WikiLeaks. And we have to give a kudo to Julian Assange, who really... Who is, is the on. MVP? I mean, is, is Julian Assange even more key? I mean, Trump's the MVP. He is very Drudge is an MVP. How, how do you... I mean, I mean if... if if I were Trump, I would give him a, 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 a pardon, pardon and ask him to come to the United States and give him American citizenship. Is it a time to bring Snowden back? Uh, that's a different issue. No. Agreed. That's a different issue. That's but I different. agree with you on Assange. I, I would offer him a pardon. Uh, look, they, they threatened to kill this guy. They threatened to drone him. They put pressure on the British government to actually withdraw the diplomatic uh, uh, recognition of Ecuador so they could rush the embassy and arrest him. Because he was the man with the... All right, guys, stay there. We're going to come back. I want to ask you guys your quick questions, quick answers. How do they strike back? This, this nest of globalists, George Soros and others. I know we're all celebrating here, but, I mean, we just want a big battle, but we're still, you know, got more attack ships coming. And, and, and so I want to win. I want to win it all. Stay with us. By the way, I'm not obsessing post-mortem here on who the MVP is. I want to know who was the most effective. Drudge overall, punching through narratives, showing the truth giving people a palette of reality to make their own decisions outside of the echo chamber of MSM. Um, obviously, Julian Assange, uh, Brexit, and Nigel Farage, and that breaking away. Uh, it's, it's, it's like planets aligning. Oh, the stuff Roger Stone did behind the scenes is epic. The intelligence community, the patriots. Uh, but I got to say, Julian Assange, I think hands down, Julian Assange, just the WikiLeaks, and that ties in the intelligence community and patriots, and whistleblowing. I think whistleblowers are the MVPs. And so when I say Assange, he's the archetype of that, but really it is those whistleblowers are the MVPs, giving us a window into these nasty globalist activities, uh, bringing salt to the earth, you know, absolutely uh, bringing the truth out. Dr. Steve Pachenik, do you think that's an accurate statement? The MVPs in this revolution against tyranny are the whistleblowers. Well, I, I, let me be frank. I think all of you uh, are the MVPs. Uh, Julian is part and parcel of a revolution that started way before Julian even knew this revolution was there. And quite frankly, it's you 
and others who sat there in the alternative media, which was called the alternative media, which will now become the mainstream media because the mainstream media is finished. What happened in its revolution are several things. Number one, the mainstream media is finished. The Clinton Foundation will be disbanded. And by the way, i got to stop you. We're not just saying this. We now have to really up our game. They're gone. They're, oh, this, this is well, really happening. It's happening, but nobody's gone until they're gone. And remember, even in the French Revolution, it got out of control. And one of the reasons that I have to be very careful about what we say and do is that we need to put in place what Reagan had in place and what Nixon had in place, a very effective team of very bright individuals who are not just loyalists, but who can implement now. Trump has a very effective team. That's, that's right. Let's talk about, way. everybody wants to celebrate. Okay, let's celebrate by winning. Uh, Roger, real quick, and then you get to ride shotgun with us. Go ahead, Roger. Uh, I mean, just real fast, in 60 seconds each. How, how, what does Trump do next, exactly, to make sure they don't undermine him? I, I think you should stop all this dangerous public events for a while. We need to get in, in first, because I think they're going to try to kill him. Uh, I have a concern about his personal security. I, I pray for his safety, as does my family. But uh, above all... He needs to be careful uh, to choose people who reflect his views. This is the section, Steve, you've seen this, mm -hmm. where they come out of the woodwork. The job seekers, uh, the, the, the courtiers, the brown nosers, the bootlickers, and they explain to you how helpful they were to you when, in fact, they did nothing to help you get elected. And that's how you're going to get infiltrated. It's not just Roger they suck. Is absolutely correct. And he mentioned the one particular group, the neoconservatives, the ones who came out like Steve Hadley, Richard Pearl, Wolfowitz, Sandy Berger, Fukuyama, a whole group of them who were exceedingly dangerous under Bush Jr., who came out and said, we want to make America number one. Yeah, the, and the, they're the folks war. working with the Islamists that blew up the towers. Yeah, now they are very dangerous. They cannot be in this administration. And that's kind of a warning to everyone that there will be no neocons involved, including ancillary individuals, particularly in the Defense Department and the National Security area. It cannot happen. And Roger understands this, and I understand it. This revolution really came out as a revolution against the neocons and what happened in 9-11. Let me ask you this. I do want, I do want to go to the MVP question because it's an important ahead, one. Right. And there's, there's somebody who, who isn't on our list so far. Because I agree with you, Alex, that Drudge, a crucial player here in what happened. Breitbart. Uh, Breitbart. Bannon. But Steve Bannon, more than anyone else, who had an acute understanding of the new media, something the campaign lacked until he joined. Uh, I and I, I've uh, missed communications with him this morning, but I think he should be the chief of staff. When I reach him, I'm going to urge him to seek that job. I think he has the big picture uh, 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 viewpoint that, that Trump needs. He knows exactly who the bad guys are. He knows exactly who those who really helped win this victory uh, are. He understands the yeah, value. He should run the hen house. And he understands the value of Infowars.com and the fact that, that Alex has been the tip of the spear, that Alex has been resistance central. Uh, he is uh, uh, deeply appreciative of everything that's happened here. He is the right man to be the gatekeeper because the gatekeeper, as Steve knows, is crucial. Who gets right. in to see the president, whose paper gets on the president's desk, is now And that's crucial. why they're crapping their drawers. We'll come back with Pacino, give him the floor, and then, and then let him go. That's why they're crapping their drawers, because Steve Bannon is a patriot. He, he, he knows cutting taxes will help people. He knows he's an American. I mean, that's all we want is just somebody. And, and so they're crapping their pants. We'll, we'll see what Pachinik thinks is most important straight ahead and what the next chapter of this is, because not everybody wants to celebrate, and that's great. But, you know, if you're celebrating this win, we're going to lose the next war. Everybody can celebrate. That's wonderful. But it, I love this so much, we have to win the next 10 battles. And it gets easier as we tap into the 1776 power. Stay with us. So it's got providence. You've got to kneel to it. Well, I tell you, a lot of great things are happening uh, right now. We have the Albion sword. Uh, I mean, this is the Republic. This is this is the new Atlantis. That, that's what our founders tried to create. It was a system to be based on liberty and freedom. The West is where the liberty came from. And now we have the social justice warriors and the, and, the, and the social engineers trying to shut that down because they can't compete with real liberalism. And they've changed all the terms and scrambled it all. But this is a, a, a really last chance, I think. Trump has to deliver. I want to ask Dr. Pachinik this and then you, Roger. 
and we're going to get Larry Nichols on. Trump has to deliver, but what is delivering? And and then and then what else does he do to, to surround himself? You're absolutely right with the generals, not the PR BSers, and not the folks who want to be on red carpets and fly around with a bunch of jackasses, you know, and rock stars. We need real men and women that are dedicated to the return of America. Dr. Well, Bocenic? What he needs to do is to first appoint those people who can clean out the system. In particular, you have to go into the FBI again. You have to go into the Justice Department. If Giuliani comes in, I remember him under the Reagan administration. He did a formidable job against all the banking elites, uh, Drexel Burnham and others. If he uh, comes in, then the IRS has to be reevaluated and reconfigured. And then if the sheriff comes in uh, to do uh, Homeland Security, that would be important to clean it out and reconstitute it. So you're going to have to decrease the size of our government. You have to have people, what I used to do and still do, is a sweeper. You come in and you clean out every institution and not give that individual a particular job. He comes in, he sweeps it out, and basically reconstitutes it very quickly. I did that under the Reagan administration. I did that under the other administrations. But you need that kind of fixer or sweeper that Roger knows about. And we go in there and we tighten it from the White House. Nixon had a very effective team in the White House so that when they came in and they overran the bureaucracy, he knew exactly what was happening. And is that why the elite hated Nixon? No, I think, yeah. I think Steve has put his finger on it. Immediately after the 1972 uh, election, Nixon went to Camp David, took his top aides with him, and they, and they just hunkered down for a week and wrote a plan to completely clean out the federal bureaucracy, top to bottom. CIA, FBI, Justice Department, particularly all the social agencies. This is what scared the Washington establishment. This is a major factor in the takedown of Nixon. He threatened the bureaucracy like... He was never, actually acting like a president. Never before. He didn't feel he had the mandate to do it in the first term where he had been very narrowly elected with less than 50% of the vote. After the great sweep of 72, he was ready to make his move. I know I went to the Office of Economic Opportunity to help close down the legal services operation, which had really become a lobbying operation against All right. the Nixon administration. We're almost out of time, and, and you're riding the shotgun, and we'll have Dr. Pachinik back, obviously, very, very soon if he wants to join us. Uh We've been asking a lot of the questions here. What's the big takeaway from this? What's the next th threat, Dr. Pachinik, and, and any other points? Yeah, the next threat is really what do we do next? It's what Roger said. Roger and I should go back into the administration and do what we've done in past administrations, which is to sit down, figure out who needs what, who's got to do what, what institutions have to be taken down or downsized, and it has to be systematic. It's very much the Trump system. He has to evaluate, he has to decide, and then he has to implement. It's like building a building. You have to know what you really need, who you really need, and who can implement it. And it has to be done very quickly so that there's no backlash. Victory is not declared until you really have a republic that's functioning along the line. That's right. Until it happens, it's just fantasy. So, so here's my Correct. question. Uh, look, if I'm the Clintons or I'm Obama, these are nasty, entitled, delusional people. It's what makes them so dangerous is they, they're lazy, they vacation constantly now. Hillary didn't used to be, but the point is they're bad news. They're pissed. They are steaming mad. Soros is running around. He's emboldened by all the crimes he's committed getting away with them. I mean, how does the 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 bleeding and wounded gremlin uh, of the New World Order neocons globalist, how do they strike back at Trump? I mean, because... Uh, this is like the march on on, Soviet, on on the Soviet Union when when I helped take it down. There was no rebound. The rebound came 20, 30 years later under Putin, but we wanted a strong leader. What we have to worry about is not the rebound that's going to come back from these wounded individuals. They've been humiliated. It's not just that they've been knocked out. They've been totally humiliated. And as Roger points out, there's really a criminal, strong criminal element to it, which Giuliani can handle. The real issue now is to look upwards. Who is Trump going to appoint? What are the, who are the people that are going to do the cleaning? Who are the people who are going to run the republic? And how, how much more are we going to decrease the entire bureaucracy so that it functions in an effective way? That's the key element for us right now. They can come back any way they want, but they're scattered, they're fearful, 
they're bleeding. You don't gloat at this point. What you do is reconsolidate, you reconstitute, and then move on, and then move on to the system and start to take it apart. But, I mean, I mean, isn't it more dangerous to leave the Clintons with all their blackmail data and everything well, in place? Well, I'll leave it up to Giuliani. He was a great prosecutor under Reagan. I used to say that Drexel Burnham. You have Mike Milken for $600 million on the cover of Time magazine, but I got a young man who's making 60000 named Giuliani. And then Drexel, uh, the head of Drexel said to me, oh, no, we've got great lawyers. I said, you're not going to be around. And I said, the $60,000 lawyer, Giuliani, is going to take down your $600 million Milton. And he did it. I'm not worried about that. The criminal prosecution will go along the lines of what Giuliani needs to do and Trump wants to do. What really has to be done, 90% of this is not about vindictiveness. Roger knows that. I know that. Even Nixon wasn't as vindictive as people claimed. He instead implemented the foreign policy. Well, here's the deal. I'm not going to leave a bunch of traitors that have sold us out seven ways to Sunday that are my personal enemy in place. I can't sleep at night. Well, I would be a moron, and Trump would be an idiot if we don't go for the jugular. No, 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 no. It's not a question. Yeah, what I'm saying is you put them in prison, you, 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 you put in place all the necessary legal uh, consequences of their behavior. That's not the, the key issue now is to move on. No, we I agree. Throw their ass in prison when they get a jury trial and move on. All right, we'll talk yeah, soon. I think this should be, you know, up to Giuliani. He knows prosecution. He understands what it means to prosecute. He knows what it what, what Well, I'll say this. I've had issues with Giuliani, but he has called her a crook. He has said she has I to mean, be. I I'm not worried about it because he has already stated publicly what he would do. Trump has stated publicly what he is going do to do. What we need to do is to maintain, to make sure that the Department of Defense has a salient capability to do what it needs to do, that our intelligence community is effective. Do we really need 16 units in the intelligence unit? I don't think so. I think we're All right. Dr. Pachinik, we're out of time. StevePachinik.com. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. History has happened. Now, Stone is going to get some lunch, and then he's going to be back with us uh, co-hosting. We've decided to not do 52 hours. We've decided to just go right through as late as the crew wants to. And uh, let me tell you, they're all getting bonuses. Well, uh, talk about MVPs, the American people taking action, speaking out. Uh, Hispanic Trump supporters who have been demonized and attacked. Uh, black Trump supporters. People have gone through hell. And I'll tell you what has happened now. I always just hire whoever does the best job. And I found of every color, there's great people. But I, like I say, when liberal media comes here, they, they go, my, my, they go, half the people here are, 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 aren't white. Well, what's going on? I'm like, yeah, and I know over at NPR, it's all white people, right? I, I, I know. Uh, we, we hire off what somebody's able to do and their credentials and then how they operate. I don't look at what color their skin is. I, I, it's, that's why I'm being called racist. It's not that they're guilting me and have power over me. It pisses me off because I'm not racist. Now, are there stereotypes of groups and people? Yeah, if you're at a Dairy Queen in East Texas and you're with a good-looking woman and guys roll in with a rebel flag, one of them's probably, you know, and the rebel flag's not a bad flag, but with a bunch of guys acting tough, they might smart off to you because they're a bunch of thugs. They're white guys. They're, they're, they're thugs. They're gang members. A bunch of black guys pull up, all acting thugged out, listen to music. You're with a hot girl. They're going to say something. Are those black thugs or are they white thugs? They're just thugs, folks. You see a thug a mile away. And that's, I'm like Martin Luther King. When I say that, I don't mean I'm like him being this big hero who got killed and all the rest of it. I mean, I go off what you do. I mean, if you've got a restaurant and black people own it, and it's got the best, you know, uh, southern cooking in town, which is, it is in East Austin, I'm in there. I care less what color they are. Hell, I've even gone in restaurants I know are owned by racist black people because I got the best damn barbecue. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, 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 I'm here. I'm here for the music. I'm here for the food. I'm here for the camaraderie. I'm here to hang, go fishing with somebody, no matter what color they are, if they're cool. And this whole leftist thing is about making us all hate each other instead of being based on basic ideas as they rob our entire birthright and everything we are. And that's what makes makes me so mad. You know, I, how they try to make everybody uncomfortable, how they try to make people not get along with each other. It, they're the race baiters. They're not even racist. They're just scientifically using this to control us, and it pisses me off. Listen, the future of this country is Hispanics. Half the kids in what 
I think it's ninth grade and below now are Hispanic in this country. In 10 years, it'll be 75%. I don't, that's fine with me. White people killed all their kids, as I said earlier. I just want the Hispanics to adopt the Second Amendment, private property, wealth, and success, and freedom. And not be spoon-fed by a bunch of weird, evil, hunchback pieces of crap in, in you know, New York and D.C. that think you're idiots. I mean, it pisses me off when people I know do a Nigerian scam. You know, they think they're really getting money from somebody. And I tell them, that, that, that's a Nigerian scam. And they go, no, you're just jealous. I know Prince Boo Boo. And it's the same thing. No, you're going to give more money, and then you're going to get ripped off. They don't want to believe they're being conned. And the folks I know that have done, you know, been ripped off by Nigerian scams are, are white people. The point is, I told the story that I'm going to our guest. I'll hold him in the next hour if need be because I, I, I don't, I don't want to cut Larry Nichols short because he's been so central part of this. And we got Roger Stone coming back in after he eats bar Texas barbecue. But what I'm getting at here is. These are people who are black, white, Hispanic, German, Jewish, Chinese, Japanese, you know, Nigerian. Who are just bad people. They'll say I'm bashing Nigerians. No, that's just a well-known scam. It's an example. I've told the story. I'm out listening to rockabilly music with Mike Judge. I'm not name dropping. That's who I was out with. And everybody goes, oh, my God, the princes are here. And then these guys pull up this whole Cadillac. And it's this, this rockabilly place where all the trainees go to is a former black bar. It's still about half black. We're at there about 2 a.m. This is years ago. And listen to this music. And these guys walk in in these outfits. And everybody's just kissing their ass, giving them free drinks and everything. And they're like, that's, that's royalty. And I said, no, that's not. That's a freaking scam. And I had to go over and say to them, I was like, God, you, you guys go around all day like you're royalty. You know? And I said, that's basically what government does or Queen Elizabeth does. Kim Jong-un is royalty. He's third generation dictator. It's all as disgusting. And that's why I don't want people to put on fronts. And I'm here to tell you, the Democratic Party is a Nigerian scam. I mean, the whole, I don't mean the literally Nigerian scam. It's all a big joke. And it's time for it to come down. It's time for it to fail. It's time for it to fall apart. And it's time for all of us to deliver on prosecuting the Clintons, deliver on tax cuts, deliver on spending cuts, deliver on detente. This is beautiful. Trump means no forced inoculations. Trump means cities pulling floor out of the water. Oh, yeah, he's on board. Trump means we've got somebody who they're going to try to block, but he's going to try with his bully pulpit to deliver everything we want that's constitutional. That's a big deal. Don't want war with Russia. Don't want to fund jihadis. Don't want to bring in unvetted people with, with syphilis or, or TB or frickin' cholera or leprosy. You want Trump. Trump doesn't want to blow our brains out. Trump isn't at satanic meetings with weirdo women drinking blood. You know, I mean, it's just like, I'm with the guy that doesn't drink blood. You know what I mean? He's not perfect, but he has the courage to take action. We're going to Larry Nichols. I'm going to skip this break before I go any further. I got to tell you about people that make this broadcast spot possible, and that's the products at InfoWarsStore.com. We're running a special that is unprecedented for this election and now this victory we're extending another day. Infowar, maybe two days, Infowarsstore.com, 34% off all the storable food, 34% off all the different nutraceuticals and, and supplements, um, free shipping on top of that, China for auto ship, an additional 10% off, Infowarsstore.com, or call toll free 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. And if we get the funds, you will see us go next level. So MVPs, it's you, the audience, that have supported us, that have spread the word, that have done it all, whether it's DNA Force with the BioPQQ and the CoQ10 and all the rest of it, our flagship most expensive product that's five times lower than leading competitors, or Super Mel Vitality or the incredible Brain Force, or uh, it's, just, it's, it's, it's all there, InfoWarsStore.com or 888-253-3139. Now, don't forget we have third-party sponsors that are great folks. Solutions from Science is one of my oldest sponsors. And they are selling some of their perfect power solar generators below cost. This is their top-of-the-line model, the one I use at my house. It's expandable, so you can make it as powerful as you want to. Normally around $6,000. they are letting them go for less than $1,500. I paid $4,000 years ago and I got the discount. It's a big deal. Visit PowerGridChaos.com. That's PowerGridChaos.com and get yours before they're gone. Uh, continuing. Revelations. I'm in the movie, a bunch of other great folks. It exposes everything. The war goes on. The fight goes on. Narrative. He's in the film, Charlie Daniels. It's powerful. 
Chuck Undersea, an Army colonel, great patriot, has spent his life's fortune, his wife's savings, to put this out five years of the making. Uh, this, this, is, this is a powerful film. It needs to be seen. Schedule showings in your area. Get the DVD, you name it. Infowars.com um, obviously is behind this because they're such great patriots. Visit revelationthemovie.info, revelationthemovie.info to purchase your DVD or check into hosting it at a theater near you. That's revelationthemovie.info. All right. We're going to continue. Not 50 hours now, but 60 hours. We're just continuing. I don't care if it's just one person. Whoever wants to stay can. They're getting hazard pay right now. I mean, we're going to continue on today, continue on, because people are tuned in. They want to know what's going on. They're excited. History's happening. Um, but, again, I, I am so thankful right now because this is a repudiation of all the fake polling companies. This is a repudiation of the mainstream media. Beth Harris comes on, big liberal. They tried to steal it from Trump last night. The tsunami win was so big they failed. The tsunami win was so big they failed. But they're going to strike back. Uh, Larry Nichols, uh, we have seen the fall of the Clintons at least so far. Let's talk about how they may counter strike. You predicted that they would no bill them. You predicted they would come out, you know, the day before the election or two days before and say that they'd done nothing wrong. But despite all that, they failed. I think it's very telling that former Clinton confidant, former Clinton insider, I think it's very telling, Larry Nichols, that that they uh, would not concede that night in a, in a press conference, he's probably too sick to, uh, that they did it the next day and that they weren't as conciliatory as Trump. Do you talk about that, A, and then B, whatever's on your plate, do you agree with me that they're insane? Trump is insane, which well, he's not, and his entire crew, they are leaving a rattlesnake in their bed if they do not rout the Clintons and their entire crime syndicate, including the neocons, immediately. You know, Alex, if Donald Trump doesn't go all the way, he's a fool. He's an absolute fool. Look, these people are like the plague. You may get a case solved. But unless you kill the plague, it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. What what they're working on, I will bet you $100 to biscuit what they did last night that delayed their announcement or concession. And she was checking with Obama, checking to make sure that everything was in place since they were having to face defeat, making sure that he had her covered with a pardon making sure that the Clinton Foundation was covered with the pardon. And then they're making their plans today. They're not making their plans to ride off. They're not planning to go away and, and disappear. You got to remember, they've made large promises, large promises to people that have put billions of dollars into that, found, into that foundation. They can't walk away from that. So, no, it's not over. Now, what Donald Trump's got to do, and I wish everybody in this audience would do it, send him a letter, send Donald Trump a letter and remind him of all the things that he promised us he would do if he became president. I'm talking about build the wall. I'm talking about stopping this madness of these unvetted Syrians coming in by the thousands. He's got to hold to that promise. You know, he's, he's been elected, but there's a couple of things I've seen that I don't like, Alex. Number one, Paul Ryan. You know, him and Paul Ryan making up, him and Hillary making up all this Oh, stuff. no, I That's agree. And Paul Ryan has stabbed him in the back three times. Right. He, he, yeah. and, 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 let me tell you, Trump's smart. He needs to get in. I'm not going to give him, he, he's going to get in. And uh, they already know it. So how will they attack him in the next two and a half months, though? I mean, they're they're not going to go away quietly. They've got they, – Donald Trump is going to run into a Congress that is going to – everything he tries to do, they're going to shut him down. And he has no to go point. on TV and name the people that are involved. He has, yes. That's why he has to remove Paul Ryan. Paul that's Ryan's right, head, right. politically, should be on a freaking spike in front of the White House. That's uh, – Paul Ryan has already said that if Donald Trump tries to build that wall, he has a lawsuit waiting. Already got it prepared, a lawsuit to stop him. And then... Oh, big freaking deal. Exactly. We, we're allowed to have a damn wall. Right. And then 
Donald Trump saying that he's going to get rid of all these presidential special orders. He's going to do special orders to get rid of them. Well, let me tell you the problem. You know this, Alex. When Obama issued every one of those presidential special orders, Congress had 30 days to rescind every damn one of them. And they didn't. And they the set up funding bureaucracies for each one of the little things. That's right. They could have shut every one of them down. But I'll bet you this. When Donald Trump signs a presidential special order, well, you bet there's a recension order signed immediately. Now, he's going to fight a Congress that is going to be vicious unless he stands up, as he has done, and tell the American people. That's right. If he is conciliatory, if he plays ball, did you notice Obama came out today and said, all right, we should all root for Trump? As a quote. We should get behind him. They're openly now saying, okay, you beat us. You took over. We'll leave you alone if you sell out. No. Now we're going to find out. Is Trump, did Trump really just want to take over the kingdom or did he want to change the world? This is where we, and I, I think he's for real. We're about to find out. I, th I think he's for real, but we got to make him prove it. He's got to prove it. He can't just say it. You know, Alex, listen, you've never seen a time when a moral Christian conservative and a liberal or a communist have negotiated. You've never seen it. Whenever negotiations take place, I'm just going to shorten it by saying a liberal and a conservative. It's one-sided. One-sided every time. So Trump's got to bring to that White House his business acumen. He knows what it's like to get into a deal. He knows what it's like to negotiate. And I hold him to what he has said. He knows how to win in negotiations, and he damn well better do it, or this whole ride will be short-lived, Alex. It will be the shortest-lived trip we've ever seen because they will cut him up in a million pieces. That's right. Let's stop right there. Talk about this, though, celebration-wise. The mainstream media is dead. They've destroyed themselves. They're a joke. They'll still prop it up because it's an even bigger collapse if they admit it's gone. Because uh, then it'll just be, oh, we're actually the real media. Oh, my God, these people were fake. It's all in the WikiLeaks. But this is a repudiation of the pollsters, the political class, the elites. This vote, this overriding of the fraud is a indicator, a major blue ribbon victory gauging the level of awakening. I mean, it, I mean, is it not spectacular Trump aside? You know, Alex, this is the greatest day for programs, networks like yours. You proved through this network, through Matt Drudge and his internet site, you proved that the truth is out there if somebody's got the courage to, courage to cover it. And I believe that the mainstream media now has humiliated itself. I don't know who they're going to go to to convince anymore. Who Who's going to believe them anymore? Who's going to believe the polls? That's right. That's anymore? right. They were already totally discredited at 6% in major studies, AP. Now <laughs> they acted like we were crazy that Trump would win. They are in negative numbers. They are the, the, the discredited joke of the world. The only way they come back is to lie and to try to put on this facade that they're changing, that they're changing and they're going to be more conservative, more fair, that they're going to deal with the news straight up. But everything I've seen this thus far this morning doesn't show me. That hey, let me tell you, you, know, you, know, you know, here's an analogy. We're going to come back. 70 seconds with Larry Nichols. If I get food poisoning in a restaurant that I've been to for years that I love, I'm never going back there again. Everything they serve, we get food poisoning from. Uh, so I don't care what they say or what they do. CNN, Megyn Kelly, all of them, you're done. You're done. We hate you. You're pathetic. We know you're a scumbag, Megyn Kelly. You're done, you little tart. You are a traitor against this country, you sack of crap. Alex Jones here back live. Bunch of special reports coming up. Donald Trump in the next segment. But I wanted to mention this because it's, such, it's so sea change. Unacceptable. Wolf Blitzer rebukes Trump for breaches in press protocol. He just said how horrible it is, that it's unacceptable. Uh, they have to fix it. The uh, White House Correspondents Association deeply concerned that he isn't telling them everywhere he goes and what he does so they can sycophantically run around behind him. This is a bunch of arrogant, 
nobodies from bad families on average, literally. I don't know why it is. Like you research these journals, they just have horrible families, horrible people, no success, just the sons and daughters of con artists, criminals, murderers, filth, trash, garbage, just you name it. It's just it's true. They don't build anything. They just parasite around, butt kiss around. They're just saying, how dare you ignore us in D.C. and then fly off back to New York. Wonderful, wonderful. That's how you help collapse them. Only Trump's glow giving them energy can keep these vampires alive. They're like, how dare you not let us suck your blood? He doesn't need them. They're not going to turn to his side. So this is a really juicy thing. Here it is. Going to have to get accustomed to some norms that are uh, in place here in Washington. Donald Trump, uh, we're told by an aide, uh, left Washington earlier this afternoon, got on his plane, returned to New York City without any reporters being told uh, that the that the president-elect was leaving Washington. <gasps> he arrived at LaGuardia uh, earlier this evening and then uh, presumably went back to Trump Tower. Wolf, as you know, that is sort of outside the norms of what we expect uh, when we cover a president-elect. Uh, it is expected that a pool of reporters is uh, kept abreast of his uh, movements That's at enough. all times. That and Will Blitzer flips out. I love how he's in a tower. It's like under siege. He, he gets it. Because these are the people that lied, said he could never win, said that he couldn't have the nomination, then said they could steal it, uh, then said he didn't deserve the money he raised. They were wrong about everything on every front and backstabbed time and time and time and time and time again. And then now we're just supposed to keep groveling because they've got a big TV station and guys in trench coats and scarves looking official when they'd sell their mother out for a stick of bubble gum. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time, and you did it. I wanted 100 million views uh, over election. We only had 90 million. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. G God bless you. You did an incredible job rubbing it in their faces. Outside of our terrestrial radio audience, it's now 5 million a day conservatively. That's very conservative. We can say we're bigger than Rush Limbaugh. We're now the biggest broadcast transmission there is. Drudge is the biggest website. Love it. It's not about who's the biggest. The point is that our message of freedom is the most popular. And that's why now, if you will actually convert the listenership to supporting us, you'll see this grow just like we promised you on TV and radio and dominating and taking America back. We've got the beachhead now. If you'll support us, buy your war bonds, become a PrisonPlanet.tv member, go get the free app at Infowars.com forward slash APP, your app. And, and it has news feeds and audio and video feeds. If you sign up and get InfoWars Prime, we just launched two days ago, at InfoWars.com forward slash app, you will get what we're doing every day. All of our reporters, our correspondents, myself, doing live special reports, original produced reports, rants, special events, and more. Four ninety five a month. It's half off right now, or 44 bucks a year. If you want to buy the yearly membership. And it gets notifications, emergency notifications, available on App Store and Google Play right now, $4.95 a month. Infowarsstore.com has a link to it as well, infowars.com forward slash app. This is the new media. This is like a new YouTube because we've already got like 15 people on there that can upload videos and original articles and content. We're going to start adding people like Millie Weaver, one of our great reporters. We're going to add other uh, reporters that we've had here in the past and uh, correspondents and other people that want to reach out to our audience. And then we're going to take the most powerful reports off that and put them on our Facebook, put them on our YouTube, put them on this broadcast and just magnify all of that. I want to get hundreds of correspondents across the country where we're with an iPhone or a droid. They have the power of a network that can't be censored by Google or Facebook and upload or stream live to reach the world. And it's got community. It's, it's, it, we're going to add a lot more to it. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash app. Donald Trump, um, again, joins us, and I've got so many questions, but but first off, uh, Donald, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great. Great to be with you. I, I've got so many questions, but you are vindicated. This has got to be the 50th time the last six months on the radical Muslims celebrating, not just in New Jersey, but New York, Palestine, all over. What do you have to say? They're still attacking you, though we've got Dan Rather on video. We've got New York Post. We've got Washington Post. We've got, uh, I mean, what's going on here? Well, I took a lot of heat, and I was very strong on it, and I held uh, my line, and then all of a sudden, you know, hundreds of people were calling up my office. I was the other day in Sarasota, Florida, and people are in line, and we had 12,000 people, which is fantastic. 
And the people were saying, many of the people from New Jersey, four or five people said, Mr. Trump, I saw it myself. I was there. They talked about Patterson, but they said, I saw it myself, Mr. Trump. I was there. So many people have called in and, and on Twitter, at real Donald Trump, they're all tweeting. So I knew it happened and I held my line and people wanted me to apologize and uh, we can't do that. People like you and I can't do that so easily. Now, we can do it if we're wrong, Alex. You apologize. I'd apologize if I was wrong. But they were celebrating and they were celebrating the fall of the World Trade Center. I think that's disgraceful. It is. And that same week you were uh, reporting on that fact, we had two different international football games, soccer games, with the Turkish fans and others during the moment of silence uh, for the dead people in, in Paris chanting Allah Akbar and booing. So did that not happen too? Well, that happened and everybody saw it. That was a week ago and the players were out on the field and they couldn't believe it. They were embarrassed. They didn't know what to do. The coach and the managers, they all apologized, but it happened. Look, we, we have to deal with reality. And, you know, it all started because I said we need surveillance. We need proper surveillance. We have people that truly are evil. And they're coming from someplace, and you know sort of where they're coming from, at least the vicinity. And I said, we need proper surveillance, whether it's a mosque or any place else. We have to be surveilled, and we have to see what's coming at us, because we're not going to have a country anymore. Between the weak borders that we have, the pathetic and weak borders where politicians are afraid to do anything about it, uh, between all of what's happening with radical, you know, you, you look at what's going on, you have a president that doesn't even want to talk about you know, the radical uh, Muslim stuff. He doesn't want to mention the word. He doesn't want to say it. But you look at what's happening where we have a president that's over there celebrating global warming and trying to get everybody excited about global warming. Like that's our number one problem. He considers that to be our number one problem. And our number one problem is what's going on where they want to blow up our cities and they want to blow up our country. That's our number one problem. You said months ago, bomb the oil of ISIS and the, and the mainstream media laughed because you said the sky was blue again. Now the Pentagon says that's the right thing to do. And now you've come out saying, quote, uh, it looks like uh, that Turkey's on the side of ISIS, close quote. Well, that uh, the next day the Russians released satellite photos documenting that there are literally thousands of trucks coming up to the border at these huge terminals connected to Irgun, the president's son, making billions of dollars total off of this again you're in trouble for saying the sky is blue well i was right about that i was right in saying in a book that i wrote you covered it really nicely i appreciate it but i wrote a very political book years ago in the year 2000 the america we deserve and i said in that book that we better be careful with this guy named osama bin laden i mean i really study this stuff i really find it very interesting and even though i'm a businessman i find it i've always found i always have been involved in politics i said we better be careful with Osama bin Laden. There's a guy named Osama bin Laden. Nobody really knew who he was, but he was nasty. He was saying really nasty things about our country and what he wants to do to it. And I wrote in the book, 2000, two years before the World Trade Center came down, I talked about Osama bin Laden. You better take him out. I said, he's going to crawl under a rock. You better take him out. And now people are seeing that. They're saying, you know, Trump predicted Osama bin Laden, which actually is true. And then two years later, a year and a half later, he knocked down the World Trade Center. And I talked about terrorism and that. That was before terrorism as we know it today. I said, we better be careful. That's going to happen. It's going to be a big thing. And it certainly is a big thing. So with the oil, and I'm glad you brought it up, but as you know, for three years, I've been saying you better take out the oil because if you don't take the oil, it's going to be a problem. So we shouldn't have been in Iraq. But once we got there, the way Osama, the way we came out was, was horrible. And I said, take the oil. Then we didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil. And as you know, Iran is getting the oil because Iran is going to take over all of Iraq. The more I research what you've actually said and done, it's amazing. You were the only leading American figure who openly said, do not go to war in Iraq. They had almost, what, 90% votes in Congress for it, bipartisan. You said, don't do it. Iran will take over. Uh, you said, I mean, look, you can say that today, and everybody can say that, but you said that in 2001, 2002, 2003, when it was very unpopular because you've done your research and had good advisors. How did you know that when almost no one else did? Well, first of all, I'm the most militaristic person there is. I'm going to build the military. If I win, I'm going to make our military so strong, so powerful that nobody's going to mess with us. We're going to take care of our vets and all of that. But I have to tell you, you have to know if you're going to go to war, you have to do it properly and you have to know what to do. I viewed it as this. Iran and Iraq were the same in terms of strength. And they'd have, they're constantly fighting. That's all they do is they fight, right? They go to war all the time. 
and they'd move 10 feet left, 10 feet right, 10 feet left, then they'd rest, and then they'd start it again four years later. This has been gone on for you know, forever. Years. Forever. And this is the way it is. I said, if you take out Iran or if you take out Iraq, either one, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. Well, we took out Iraq. And by the way, Iraq has the second largest oil reserves in the world. People don't even know that. So we gave, like, incredible. We took out Iraq. I said, you're going to destabilize. Well, and I said, and you'll know this, and you know this, and I appreciate what you just said, uh, then Iran is going to come in and Iran is going to take over Iraq. And they, they're just taking it over right now. As we speak, they're taking it over. Iran is running Iraq and very soon will be virtually going to be totally running Iraq, especially after all of the, you know, the deal we just made, which is the worst. So I said, keep the oil. And I said, if you're going to leave, you shouldn't have gone in, but they shouldn't have. They should have left soldiers behind, like 20,000 or a certain number of soldiers. But if you're going to leave, take the oil. And I've said it. Then they left, they didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil, Iran is getting the oil, everybody's getting everything but us. So we lost thousands of soldiers. We spent $2 trillion in Iraq. We have wounded warriors who I love all over the place. And what do we get out of it, Alex? We had nothing, we had nothing. So, no, the French and the Germans are getting the oil and the Iranians are getting the oil. And you know who the number one customer for the oil is? Guess what, China. That's right. I mean, how smart is China? They outsmart us on every level militarily. They outsmart us on trade like we're losing. We have a four hundred and fifty billion dollar trade deficit with China. Let me ask you this: You're a top business guy, you know, on your own from nothing. How did China get ninety seven percent of rare earth in, uh, uh, minerals in the world? How is the United States or nobody else even trying to get rare earth minerals when it's what goes in the smartphones, the computers? Trillions is made a year. How did we just give them the global market in that? That's crazy. Well, what a lot of people don't know, Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan is a place we can go in because, you know, you have Pakistan and you have nuclear weapons, a lot of things going on there. But we, we go into Afghanistan. We're fighting, you know, tremendous mountains and ridges. We're fighting on one side. And you know who's got their excavators on the other China. side? China. China. taking out all the minerals. You know, Afghanistan, nobody knew this. Afghanistan is rich with minerals, not oil, but minerals. Lithium, everything. everything. And China is taking out all the minerals. And here we are fighting. We have trillions, we have like a trillion dollars in Afghanistan, and we get nothing out of it. And we're going to end up leaving and keeping a couple of thousand soldiers there and this and that. We get nothing. China is taking out the minerals. They're the, they're the buyers, the big buyers at very, very low prices of, as you know, of the oil in Iraq and probably in Syria. But China is a big buyer of the oil. But one thing with the oil, it's because it's, it's, you've covered it. For three years, I've been saying hit the oil because ISIS is getting strong and they're no JV, as the president said, and they're certainly not contained. But I said hit the oil and hit them hard. And they laughed at me and they would put generals on television saying, no, that strategy wouldn't work. Well, after Paris, they started hitting the oil and it does work. The problem is we've given them a two year edge. They have billions of dollars. The now. Russians started hitting the oil for one month and ISIS is already rolling over. Can you speak to, as president, what your relationship would be with foreign leaders and, and, and what you know about uh, Vladimir Putin? Because all I know is, why are we starting a fight with Russia when they're not doing anything to us? Right. Well, uh, number one, and, and just to finish on the oil, by the way, I say hit the oil, but we should keep the oil. In other words, we should keep. We'll get ExxonMobil. They'll go in. We'll get other of our oil companies. We'll get some of the great oil companies. We bid it out. We should keep the oil. You know, in the old days, to the victor belong the spoils, right? We don't have that. We go in, we fight a war, and we leave. We get nothing, except we get death, and we get deficit. That's all we get. Uh, I think I get along great with people. I mean, I will probably get along well with him, and if I don't, somebody else will, and who knows? You know, he's a difficult cookie. He's tough and he's smart. I was on the show 60 Minutes with him recently, not together. I mean, we they did him and they profiled me at the same show, which was there. We were stable mates, right? But I think I'd get along very well with him. I think it do fine. Look, here's the thing. We lose with every country, and yet we don't get along with any countries. China is killing us. Everybody's killing us. China is just beating us to a pulp and trade. Japan, Mexico is killing us, and yet we don't get along with anybody. With me, they're not going to get so rich, believe me. What about you know, crippled America? Thing. It's a number yeah. one. you got a big rally tonight. Everywhere you go, your crowds just get bigger. I mean, obviously, you're probably going to get the Republican nomination now. Wow, and you're ready for the dirty tricks. Uh, one minute left, Donald Trump. What do you have to say about your book and what's coming up? Well, first of all, before the book, because you mentioned one thing. I had never heard that, but I am in this to win it. I am not in this to say, oh, gee, I've done a really good job. A reporter called up, a very powerful reporter, said, how does it feel? How does it feel? I said, it only feels, because they said what we've done has never been done before politically. And I've been in the poll for five months since it came out. I'm number one. 
I said, it's only good if we win. If I, if I don't win, I've wasted a lot of time. That's the way I view it. He said, no, no, you haven't, you haven't. I said, believe me, if I don't win. Because we can't do anything to make our country great if I don't win. I'll be watching television someplace. It'll be, forget it. So I wrote a book called Crippled America. It's doing a fantastic business. I don't know if you can see that thing right up we there. We can. But it's doing great business. I hope your audience goes out and buys it as Christmas gifts and everything else. And I just want to finish by saying your reputation's amazing. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot, but you'll be... Uh, You'll be looking at me in a year, in a year, or two years. Let's give me a little bit of a time to, to run things. But uh, a year into office, you'll be saying, wow, I remember that interview. He said he was going to do it, and he did a great job. Because I want to move to Spain. I really, really want to move to Spain right now. Rob Dew with Infowars.com, and I would like to be the first to thank white America for ruining the country. Although I'm not the first. In fact, Van Jones went out on election night and got on CNN and said, it's white lash. And that's the reason it happened, because white people are so bad and evil and mad that they wanted to send a message that a woman couldn't be president. We've talked about race. I mean, we've talked about everything but race tonight. We've talked about income. We've talked about class. We've talked about region. We haven't talked about race. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And then last night we had Samantha Bee saying white people ruined America. That's right, here's the clip. People will be looking for someone to blame the pollsters, the strident feminists, the Democratic Party, a vengeful God. But once you dust for fingerprints, it's pretty clear who ruined America. White people. She then joked and said, oh, I guess ruining Brooklyn was a dry run. That's right, because somebody who builds up properties and hires people to build them and maintain them is ruining America and ruining jobs, just like he did in D.C. with the new post office. In fact, the government gave him the bid and he brought it in under budget and under time. That's terrible. That's the wrong thing to do, Donald. You're doing a horrible disservice to our country. But wait, we got more comedians. Here's Chelsea Handler literally breaking down in tears that Hillary Clinton didn't win. And I think, I guess the message that I want to like spread out to other women is, is exactly what you're saying is not to give up. Sorry, I hate crying on camera, but <laughs> is not to give up because this is so important. And it's, it's easy to say, throw in the towel and that we're going to leave no, or I'm going to move to Spain because I want to move to Spain. I really, really want to move to Spain right now. And I'm going to get serious here in a second, but let me show you one more clip. Here's Seth Meyers wiping away the tears that his mother might not get to see the first woman president. And whoever you are, I hope I live to see your inauguration. And I hope my mom does too. Uh, she was really excited yesterday. And um, I was really sad for her. And then he went on to say, well, the first woman president could still be out there watching this. And then you still get to be the first woman president. Look, people, it's not even the point that Hillary Clinton would have been or not have been the first woman president. She's an evil bitch. That's the bottom line. In fact, one of her first jobs as a public defender was defending a child rapist. And she used tactics on this little girl who we had just behind me in the studio, Kathy Shelton, who was 12 years old when she was pulled off her bike and gang raped. How's that for feminism? Okay, and Hillary went on to take evidence and move it across state lines. She mishandled evidence in this case. She actually took this little girl, brought her up on the stand and made her cry. And she was using tactics now that are illegal under rape shield laws. Does that sound like a person that needs to be president? They jerked me off my bicycle. They put me in the truck and they were beating me they, and, ra and they raped me. And he was saying he knew I liked it, except in a more terribly manner than that. I um, was left out on the ground, barely conscious. Uh, some, sometimes at one time I was unconscious. Hmm. It's pretty funny, though, watching people like Colbert on the Colbert Report having his election night special when they knew Hillary was going to win. They knew without a shadow of a doubt because she had sewn it up in the polls and that they had, it was just nothing but a little bit of racist white people that were going to vote for Trump. And then watching them just almost cry on TV as they saw the results coming in. It's even funnier watching the Young Turks as a whole panel watching the utter disdain on their faces because they lost. Get over it, let's move on. Now let's not keep encouraging people by going it's only racist doing it because I'm not a racist and I voted for Donald Trump, period.
And there's plenty of other people that voted for him that aren't racist either. And we don't have a desire to hate women and ruin this country with misogyny or xenophobia. All we want to do is protect the border, have fair elections, and have a decent economy where everybody has a chance to succeed. And if you don't want that for people, if you think you have to run around and take care of everybody, then you're the real racist out there. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. Good line for a comedy show, eh? No, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a comedy show at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're awaiting Donald Trump. Roger Stone, this is a surreal moment for you. Tell us your heart and soul. You know, Alex, I wanted Donald Trump to run for president as early as 1988. I arranged for him to uh, speak to the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And a Portsmouth city councilman named Mike Dunbar formed the first known draft Trump for president committee. He was still working for Trump in the most recent New Hampshire primary. Now, you gave me six months ago like a big present. Oh, here's a Donald Trump 2000 thing. Nobody's got this. Yeah. So uh, in 2000, I wanted him to seek the Reform Party nomination because I could see that George Bush and Al Gore were not what America needed. Uh, and uh, he did seriously consider that briefly. Uh, Ross Perot urged him to run. My friend Jesse Ventura, then governor of Minnesota, urged him to run. Uh, and um, he did look at it. Uh, and of course, the Reform Party then was entitled to federal matching funds. So he would have been running on OPM, other people's money. In the end, he made what I think was a shrewd calculation that you couldn't win as a third party candidate. You could only win as a Republican or a Democrat. Three years ago, I wanted him to run. I signed up again as a consultant to his uh, exploratory effort. Uh, and the time was really not quite right. I was probably more for it than he was. So this has been a long time coming for me. I have taken the beating from my friends and some people who aren't my friends for 30 years of saying, oh, Donald Trump, come on, you're out of your mind. He's never going to run. This is all about burnishing the brand. This is all about his, his uh, you know, the fact that he's a media whore and he just likes to read his name. He's never really going to do it. So um, this is vindication. They've been proven wrong in spades. Boy, have they. A royal flush for Roger Stone. Uh, it is It is a great night. I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say here. I would like him to claim this so that the moment will be complete. And it's 1.44, about to be 1.45 Central Time. I'm here with Roger Stone. History is happening now. There's Donald Trump. Let's fade up the audio. There's Pence. The vice president. There's the family. That is now the president, vice president elect. Pence is preparing to come down. Uh, this is just a repudiation of the establishment, a repudiation of all their evil, all their lies, all their stuck upness, all these, I don't want to say ugly, but just these ugly looking dumbasses that hijacked the country, just pissing on us. Uh, this, this, this. We see the bikers for Trump with their sign. A great bunch of guys. They're going to try to hit us, though. So we're about to hear this. This is Pence, Vice President, Governor of Indiana. We're hearing this now. Roger, uh, let's hear from Pence. Get ready. This is it. This is the rebirth of the Republic. This is happening now. Infowars is the tip of the uh, It's crazy. We're the tip of spirit. Yes, indeed. This is, this is it. 1776 reborn. If they stay true, they will save the planet. If they don't, don't you agree? If they don't, we'll be out attacking them. This is a historic night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Is this is almost as good as life? Uh, this is almost as good as Yorktown defeating the Ben Coast. It's waiting. pretty Complicated amazing. Business. Can you believe this is happening? Well, I'd have a bad feeling earlier today. This is so good. Uh, let's turn up Trump. Thank you very much. Let's hear him. The president elect 45. Yeah. I've Go just him, received screen. a call from Secretary Clinton. <laughs> is that even she than congratulated this? us, it's about us, on our victory. Yeah. And I congratulated her and her family America on a very, very assholes. hard How's it feel? campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Piece of filth. worked very long and very hard over a long period of time. She worked hard to bring us down. And we owe her 
a major debt of gratitude for the service immediately. to our country. Oh, I, I don't like this. Very sincere. I know he's got to be gracious. He's got to be like gracious. Now it's time. What do you say this? For America to bind the time wounds break. of division. We have to get together. He's got to be big, right? To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together up there? as one united people. He's a good man. Working together, we will begin the urgent task of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. Can you imagine the how they're crapping their pants right now? Right? I've spent my I'd entire so life in business upset right now. <laughs> looking at the untapped potential in projects and in people <laughs> They're so the upset world. right now. That is now what I want to do for our country. <laughs> Tremendous potential. I've gotten to know our country so well. Tremendous potential. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Every single American oh, will have yeah. the opportunity oh, to realize his or her wow. fullest potential. Wow. The forgotten oh. men and women this is so of our good right now. will be forgotten no longer. We're going to take care of our veterans. We're going to cut taxes for any people. No problem. We no, are going to fix no, no, he is. our inner cities. He now is totally and confident. And rebuild our highways, bridges, tunnels, airports, schools, hospitals. We're going to rebuild our infrastructure. <laughs> which will become, by the way, second to none. And we will put millions of our people to work as we rebuild it. I love it. Who else would put his youngest kid up on stage? This is just so We will weird. also finally take care of our great veterans. Close that was coming. He's been so loyal, and I've gotten to know so many. I've talked to folks that know the Trumps. They're just totally in the military. Journey. The time well, I spent with the, them the average public, you know, is a total pussy compared to that. Among my greatest honors, our veterans are incredible people. We will embark upon a project of national growth and renewal. <laughs> I will harness the creative talents of our people, and we will call upon the best and brightest to leverage their tremendous talent for the benefit of all. It's going to happen. All right, we got the crew in here delusionally happy. Let's hear Trump. Trump. What's going on here? We will double our growth the strongest yeah. Yeah. I can't, I mean, look, the thing is, the good time, people never realize we, we have the power over scum. We have to rediscover that. along with us. Yeah. We will we'll have great relationships. <laughs> we expect to have great, great relations. Leanne, get over here. Put a chair up. No dream is too big. No oh. challenge is too great. Nothing we want for our That's future great. is beyond our reach. Let's hear from Trump. America History's will happening. will no longer settle for we anything for hours. less than the best. <laughs> Listen, they're going to counter-strike. I'm not, not overconfident. I'm not underconfident. Roger, they're going to pull some stuff. Big and Obama's in for two months. We and, you know, we've got, we've got, we've got November, December, January until the 18th. What do we do? They're going to... The pardons. I, I've been predicting this year for well over a year. I want to tell... That's where they will move. That while we will so he should bully pulp and try to block that. I we will deal fairly... Because here's the deal. If they wanted to leave and quit, I'd do that. They're not going to They're not gonna back off. They're a bunch of arrogant assholes. We will see yes, but they've gotten a real taste of defeat tonight. Partnership, <laughs> not conflict. Hey, look, look and now, how big? And you've been like in the career. This moment nine is, administrations in four of them. Is this the biggest thing ever? Is, it meant, without any question, look, I thought, I thought Reagan's election was the greatest political eye you could have. This is... Ten times I better. I thank my parents, who I know are looking down on me. Right oh, the public only knew how good it was. That's why they're so scared. Jesus. God, no wonder they're freaking out. They've got our phones tapped, everything. They're hearing the conversations behind the scenes. So they're know, watching Donald Trump. So they know what we're really thinking. We hear articles every day. They're shitting their pants. We just want to cut taxes and make everybody rich. Everybody get along with each other. <laughs> they are so pissed right now. All these asshole bankers. Very shy, actually. <laughs> Crank Trump here. I want to finish. Turn up. Turn up. Where is Robert? Where is Robert? My brother Robert. And they should all be on this stage, but that's okay. They are great. And also my late brother Fred. Great guy. Fantastic guy. <laughs> Fantastic family. I was very lucky. Great. Brothers, sisters, great, unbelievable parents. To Melania and Don. Keep the didn't desert him. So I'll pay the victory.
And Ivanka? This is and Eric? How we're involved in fishing like this. And Tiffany? And Baron? It freaks me out. My whole life has been victory. I love I just... you and I thank you. And especially for putting up with all of those hours. This was tough. This was tough. This Without political stuff is nasty and it's Egyptian. tough. So I want to thank my family very much. Really fantastic. Thank you all. Thank you all. And Lara, unbelievable job. Unbelievable. Vanessa, I mean, thank ladies you. and gentlemen, thank we just beat much. the media. We beat George Soros. We beat person. the Rothschilds. We beat the Rockefellers. You've all given me such incredible support, and I will tell you that we have a large group of people. You know, they kept saying we have a small staff. Not so small. Look at all the people that we have. Look at all of these people. And Kellyanne and well, Chris. And now we got to make sure we build Rudy. this country and hire people and, and Steve, really and David. do good. We, we, have got, on, Roger. we have got. We just promised people we're going to give them jobs people. and build this country. I'm going to bust my ass to do it. It's been. Very, you know it is. We run a company. We want to believe in your people. They 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 belong to you. And you are to them. They're part of you. They help you. You help them. Unbelievable. Turn up. Unbelievable. He traveled with us and he went through meetings. And, see that Rudy never changes. Where's Rudy? Where is he? Oh, Rudy. Rudy. Governor Chris Christie, folks, was unbelievable. Not, he lost all the weight, though. Trying to be perfect. Dude. Thank you, Chris. The first man, first senator, first major, major politician, let me tell you, he is highly respected in Washington because he's as smart as you get. Senator Jeff Sessions. Yay, yes. And, and the owner of General Funds there. Governor Chris Christie. He's got a jettison, Chris Christie. Oh, and Julian. No jettison himself. And Rudy doesn't want Thank you. Rudy really doesn't. The I first think Rudy's man, happy as we are right senator, now. First senator, first major, major politician. Let me tell you, he is highly respected in Washington because he's as smart as you get. Senator Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Here we go, baby. This will be a day you long remember. Yeah. Great man. Another great man. Very tough competitor. He was not right easy. Here. He was not easy. Who was that? Is that the mayor that showed up? <laughs> is that Rudy? Oh, Rudy got up here. It's going out. It's fun. Another Let's great man who has been uh, really a, a friend to me. But I'll tell you, I got to know him as a competitor. Because he was one of the folks that was negotiating to go against those Democrats. Dr. Ben Carson. Where's Ben? Where is Ben? And by the way, Mike Huckabee is here someplace and he is fantastic. Mike and his family, Sarah, thank you very much. General Mike Flynn. Yes. Where is yeah, Flood's great. And no, this is perfect. The point is, he's and not out to get us. This is a we major victory. This is going to shake the world. And admirals that we should talk about how they're going to counter-strike. Well, they're going to be a counter-strike. People, and it's really an honor. We have 22 we have all day congressional to talk about Medal of Honor recipients. Tonight, I just want to celebrate. People. I agree. A very special person who, believe me, and, you know, I'd read reports that I wasn't getting along with him. I never had a bad second with him. He's an unbelievable star. He is, that's right, how did you possibly guess? So, let me tell you about Reince. And I've said this. I said Reince, and I know it, I know it. Look at all his people over there. I know it. Reince is a superstar, but I said, they can't call you a superstar, Reince, unless we win. Because you can't be called a superstar like Secretariat. If Secretariat came in second, Secretariat would not have that big, beautiful bronze bus at the track at Belmont. But I'll tell you, Reince is really a star. And he is the hardest working guy. And in a certain way, I did this right. Well, I'll say this. We have Get reached the main shield generator. You may start boy, your landing. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Target, maximum firepower. It's about time you did this right. Huh? Ooh, a little oh jab there for 2012. What are you talking about? 
Oh, I tell you, did this right. Oh, he did, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, now the next president of the United States. Piece of shit is up there. Donald Trump. Thank you. It's been an honor. God yeah, yeah. It's a great honor. We tried to put in our little blue-eyed baby, uh, um, uh, Paul Ryan, but it's okay. Our tell me, he's going to get rid of these people, right, Ryan? Right? I sure hope so. Was so important to the success and what we've done. So I also have to say I've gotten to know some incredible people, the Secret Service people. See, I'm not butthurt because we're like far, Batman. We used to blame for the good stuff, but he's not thinking us. I don't it's mess okay. Around with them. Because our listeners are the greatest people. And when I want to go and wave to a big group of people and they rip me down and put me back down in the seat. But they are fantastic people, so I want to thank the Secret Service. And law enforcement in New York City, they're here tonight. These are spectacular people. Sometimes underappreciated, unfortunately, but we appreciate them. We know what they go through. So it's been what they call a historic event. But to be really historic, we have to do a great job. And I promise right. you, you gotta deliver we will now, not buddy. let you down. We will do a great show. You told me you're here, so I want to let you down. I look very much forward to being your president. Love my and taxes, hopefully baby. at the end of two years or three years or four years or maybe even eight years, you will say, so many of you work so hard for us, but you will say that, you will say that that was something that you were really were very proud to do. And, and I this can is surreal. Thank this you victory very much. is truly And I can only good. say that while the campaign is over, our work on this movement is now really just beginning. That's right. The battle starts now. We have to we're deliver going to tax to cuts, industry, the jobs, American not media. wars. And we're going to be Tell me, Roger, he's not going to start a war, right? I don't think he'll start a war. Please, God. So enough of those. President. You'll be so proud. Again, it's my honor. It was an amazing evening. It's been an amazing two-year period. And I love this country. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you. It's almost 3 o'clock in the morning, Central Time. And we now have President-elect Donald Trump. Donald Trump is no angel. And neither am I. But Donald Trump's will is that you be prosperous and that you be successful. No dream is too big. No challenge is too great. Nothing we want for our future is beyond our reach. America will no longer settle for anything less than the best. And that's why Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, all the big mega banks, have set themselves up against him. Because they believe they own you. I knew a year and a half ago when I endorsed Donald Trump he was going to win. And I've talked some about why I knew that. But people I know and people I trust that are patriots, that have defended this republic, confirmed to me, and I've seen it in Donald Trump's actions, that he wanted to restore this republic. But I want to be very clear to you. Very clear. It isn't about credit. It's so that you know the danger. You've seen the stupid ads with the bunny rabbit that says Energizer inside. If you want to know what powers Donald Trump, individually it's a love of liberty and a love of standing up to corruption. He's not perfect, nobody is. But what powers the movement is InfoWars. They want to establish a private, corporate, global government. Nigel Farage, the leader of UKIP, would come on my show 15 years ago when he barely had a few members of parliament. Now he's 100 times bigger or more. 
And he would say, it's your listeners listening to you in the U.S. when I go knock on doors. That's why we're getting the U.K. Independence Party. It's, it's InfoWars. Thank you. He said that on the show. It's not about us bragging. It's that the spirit of the InfoWar across the world, from Australia to the U.K. to Russia, from Nigeria to Mexico, is spreading. And it's the Renaissance idea of freedom. And that's why they're trying to shut us down. Because... We're not perfect, but we're not out to get people. We believe in lower taxes. We know empowering the people is the answer. We don't want to break up families. We're not out to get people. They are going to try to collapse the world economy. They've already been propping it up for a while. They're going to blame it on Donald Trump, a global depression. They knew they couldn't stop the movement. So now that he's in, they're going to implode the economy and blame him. Well, they're the ones who created the derivatives. Well, they're the ones who created the end of Glass-Steagall. When Hillary Clinton and Larry Summers did it all, they're going to blame Donald Trump. And how do I know that? They threatened the UK. They said, you try to leave this unelected thing, we'll implode your economy. We'll take your jobs away, just like they did in Iceland or Greece. Some countries fold, some fight back. We know their plan. If you're just conscious and want to know the truth, it's all there. It's not my opinion. I want self-determination. I won't be held hostage. So, this isn't like buying a lottery ticket where you elect Donald Trump and beat the establishment and then expect the whole gravy train to continue on. Who wants this fake gravy train? We need to get back to what makes us human, what makes us real. And if we're getting ahead of the expense of some third world people, we shouldn't do it. If we're getting ahead of the expense of our kids, we shouldn't do it. I saw the enemy truly against Donald Trump spiritually hating him, so I backed him. Donald Trump is more a figurehead of liberty than ever before. And he has the Holy Ghost protecting him. No weapon formed against him. Prosper.